And we are live. We're going to talk about Civil War of the non-Captain America variety. Yeah. Or we'll the American Civil way down South in the land of the traitors. First American. So you start to do what? <laughs> uh, what did he say? So, this was a movie that Southpaw and I literally just watched and got home from the theater for, like, what, a few minutes ago? Yeah, it's really fresh in my in, in my mind, at least. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have it playing in my mind, and I'm like, that was a movie that I watched. C hasn't seen it, but we figured it'd be a fun premise for a live stream if we just explained <laughs> what happened in this movie and what it was about. Um, yeah. So, for anyone who doesn't know, first of all, that, you know, I'm letting everyone kind of trickle in. But for anyone who doesn't know, because uh, I didn't know about this until literally earlier today um, when Southpaw told me about it and said he was about to go see it. Uh, A24 uh, just released a movie uh, called Civil War about some kind of like futuristic ish civil. I think it, I think it's, it's set in the future, right? Because they, they mentioned like some kind of Antifa massacre that I don't think has a, yeah, is a thing that has happened yet. It seems like it would be set like 20 years in the future at most. Yeah. They mentioned some kind of Antifa, Antifa massacre that Kirsten Dunn's character like became famous for uh, photographing when she was in college. So we're talking mm -hmm. like, 20 ish years after whenever that happened. So, you know, this is this movie's probably been set in like the 2040s, 50s, something like that. So, yeah, it's like the American Civil War in some few decades from now. Like, and, and like we're following a group of uh, journalists, photographers who are just trying to stay like impartial um, and objective and just and just go around, you know, documenting historical uh, uh, historical events. That's like what this this movie is. Well, their main objective in this, like, 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 in the story in this movie, of course, is yeah, they're trying to get to want... DC so they can yeah. interview the president of the United States, played played by Nick Offerman. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love that. Like Nick Offerman went from like having the best line in um in The Last of Us, where uh uh Frank is like uh oh he's I'm forgetting the line exactly. But he's basically talking about how bills always in the government like are Nazis. It feels like the government are Nazis, and now he's the president <laughs> of the fucking American Nazi government. <laughs> right. So I guess that's where we should start because, like, see, remember when we were watching the trailer earlier today, and from the trailer alone, I was like, I really don't know like what this like the war even is about, like what's happening. Yeah. So now I've seen the movie. Um, I still have no fucking idea what this war is about. <laughs> Nope. I don't great. know. I don't know. Like who, the president is very clearly being framed as a bad guy in this movie, even though at the same time they're trying to market this as sort of like a um, a view of a futuristic civil war from a completely impartial standpoint. At the same time, completely framing they're, one of the sides as as evil. That doesn't sound very objective, does it? Well, <laughs> it's clear you can't be objective. <laughs> well, the thing is that they're. Um... There is no sense of whether the government is a Republican or a Democrat. Nope. I guess that a lot of, uh, I mean. Literally, like when I was walking out of the theater, there were these two like older ladies uh, in front of me who had just come out of the same movie who were like, so I, can you explain, one of them was like, can you explain to me to the other one? Can you explain to me like if he was a Republican or Democrat uh, president? And the other one was like, I I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I, I think like, like the, um, what a lot of people would suspect is that he's like Trump coded, I guess. But uh, honestly, I didn't even get that vibe at all. Because it's giving seems, Donald Trump. Like, honestly, he's too normal to be Donald Trump. It, so. it, yeah, it's like, well, I mean, you don't really <laughs> even get a sense of like what this character is. Um, you, Like the movie opens with him kind of like rehearsing a speech he's about to give. And like, that's mm -hmm. the most insight you really get in terms of like what kind of character he is, which is just he's a bit nervous to give a speech. And he's kind of he's trying to nail down his lines. Um, they, I didn't even they, see it as, they like, present him as this like cowardly sort of uh, like corrupt, I guess, president. But it's like we don't know anything about him or what his politics are, how this war even started and what his involvement was. We know that he's like pulled a Palpatine and extended his term indefinitely because he's on his third term now. That's like all we really know, though. Um, I honestly didn't even read uh, like that opening scene as like, oh, they're char they're characterizing him as as like nervous or something. It's just like. No, this just seems like standard, um, like a little bit of, like anxiety before you were about to like give a, a, a televised speech. It doesn't, yeah. But like, like if anything, it, like it, 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 it kind of like humanizes the guy, personalizes him like a little bit, but like a little bit, yeah. But then that's basically all we get for the whole movie. 
Yeah. I mean, till, right up until the very end, but like that's the, skipping ahead. Uh, well, the, I mean, really, you know what? The most that they do to where it, like make it clear that he is a bad guy is when um, Stephen McKinley Hen uh, Henderson's character, um, Sammy, uh, Sammy, is, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna like, do we call him Tooth here or or, or Sammy? Uh, we're just we're just gonna call him Sammy. Uh, we're gonna call him Sammy. Yeah. He's 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 Tooth here from Dune Part One. Um, but but he, like, there's a there's a scene where they're riding in um in their in their uh, little SUV, and um Sammy is uh, basically asking um our male lead Joel, uh, not to be confused with Joel Miller. Um, uh, Joel is like like uh, the 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 male the main male journalist. Also, by the way, who troop. who plays Joel? Because I feel like I recognized him from me. Uh, was that, that um was that uh the guy who Wag played Pablo Escobar in Narcos? Wagner Mora, and he is. Let's see what what is he? Uh... <clears throat> Dude, that is the voice of the wolf from Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. Oh yeah, okay. He is yeah, Pablo right. Escobar. Yeah, so that's where I know okay. him from. Okay, okay. Because yeah, like every um, there's a, there are a lot of like recognizable actors in this movie that I'd never even heard of until today. You got Nick Offerman as the president. Kirsten Dunst is playing the main character. Uh, you got you have the guy from Dune, like like uh, Southpaw just mentioned. And fucking yeah. Jesse Plemons of Breaking <laughs> Bad fame shows up for, for in in a very hilarious scene that's not intended it's, to be funny extremely distracting um and and <laughs> let me tell you the the cyclops sunglasses are the least funny part of that scene <laughs> oh okay i need to know more <laughs> um, before we before we actually d dive into like any of this i did get a super chat that i don't want to skip over uh, for two dollars from mcduggins thank you for the good videos keep it up what a great guy <laughs> <laughs> i love it wow she, you're such a grifter yeah, oh, I, okay. I do only want money, so it's it's glad I'm glad that I'm getting money now. That is true. He just wants to do things for money. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, so there's a scene where where um, Sammy is basically running some questions by Joel, um, who again, like the objective of the main characters of this movie is to get to DC to interview the president before the Western forces uh, go like 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 basically storm DC on the Fourth of July. Now. Um, so there's like there's a, there's a series of questions that uh, Sammy asks. I remember one of them being something about like, so this president apparently disbanded the FBI. Why he apparently. would disband the oh, how the fuck he managed to do that? I don't know <laughs> why he would why he would do that is confusing. Um, Was I, the I guess, FBI against the government? Like were so, they fighting against them? So see, you know your friend. Well, I say friend in, in air quotes. Uh, Pixel Pro. Uh, so who's oh, going yeah, to handle who's going to handle uh, the cases of of grooming minors uh, over state lines? Who's going to like like, like right. actual actual federal crimes? Like, well, so the FBI are the ones that handle this. So is this just a thing that like the it's just not a thing anymore? That he's well, somehow the president have, has enough power, even in wartime, <laughs> to disband the fucking FBI. The, the I just FBI, want to make this be... really clear for the chat, just in case anyone fucking spins this the wrong way, because we know we know how the <laughs> internet is. Right. This is a former friend of mine who yeah. turned out to be a fucking pedophile. I, I didn't yeah, mean I hate her guts. This. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, well, the 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 point being, well, and, and honestly, yeah. Well, here's the thing: is she was even doing. Well, I think she was doing across state lines, but the point is that she was doing it electronically, and she was like sending nudes, um, which is like you can't. You like, I'm sorry, but like when it comes to sexting, it doesn't matter if you're in the same state. It's it's the it's the federal age of consent. So all it's right. like, so in this case, like, all right, what on earth? Again, when it comes to like federal crimes like this, like, so with the FBI disbanded, what the fuck? <laughs> so look, look, there's a lot of important uh, things involved in the in the FBI, uh, and I think it's just. Uh, insane the concept that okay well, I, in I'm still the midst stuck on, of like, a why? political climate where, what if, where a fucking civil <laughs> war could happen maybe so, you want the FBI you know to prevent that from happening what if you murder someone in one state and then cross state lines I guess you're good to go I have no idea why he would he would disband the <laughs> FBI because we don't we're not told what this war is about how it started what each faction is interested in but here's the thing you got you have the the fucking what is it the Florida alliance and the then Florida you have the western alliance. thing which, yeah 
which by the way, the Western, what is it? Western Union, what Western Western forces, well, Western forces, Western forces hold, hold on, hold which on, are comprised on. completely of Texas and California. <laughs> so you know what? You know what I'm gonna do? Hold on, Sheev. I'm going to uh is there a way for you to get this image up on screen uh, yeah. of the map? All right. H hang on. Because you know what? Let's just let, fuck it. Let's just talk about this. It, it's so funny because we we've mentioned one thing that they've said to characterize the president as a bad guy, and we've like, oh my god. The only other thing I remember, uh, uh, she, do you remember? Okay, so I, the there was a question of disbanding the FBI. There was a question about using airstrikes on civilians. What was the zoom in on that a little bit if I can? I can't. Damn. Damn. Bro. Okay. Skill issue. Okay, so um, as right. you can see, there's there are four factions um, in this. Uh, for, for those who cannot like make out what's going on there, there's four factions uh, in this civil war. You have the New People's Army, um, which I don't think we were even told anything about them in the actual movie. Where, where did you even get this graph, Southpaw? If I could ask, Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> this is this is this is Wikipedia. Free encyclopedia. Yeah. Uh, so, well, here's the thing. There, there is actually. Give me one second if I can find uh, civil war. Alex Garland map because there's actually there's a uh, semi well okay so there's also <laughs> there's this tweet that has uh, an alternative version of it but I mean it, it, it's showing the same exact data I think it's just a little easier to um, read oh, oh and then there's also this one uh, which again I think that's easier to read the one that's actually like color coded um, but you see what I mean? So the New People's Army is uh, the northwest part of America, and they just are not in this movie. Um, they're completely irrelevant, and I have—I I honestly have no idea why it is you would uh, even make the like make them a faction, um, given what little relevance they have in the movie. The Florida Alliance are in like one scene. I'm pretty sure that they're the. Um, they're the guys that are in that one skirmish on what appears to be like a university campus. Um, is that what it was? Okay. Because well, that's the thing. What I was kind of getting at is like, I have no idea what factions are which mm -hmm. uh, at any given point in the movie because like they don't really tell us. Honestly, the, honestly, the uh, I will disagree with you there because the Western forces actually look like they are a proper like military. It's just that they have um, the American flag. It, uh, so it's so funny because the... Um, uh, that shot in the trailer of an American flag with t just two stars on it. I just figured it's like, is that like in a Western forces state? And it's like, well, it's a Western forces military base. So Western forces soldiers are actually identified. If you see a two star American flag on uh, like, like, like patch on their uniforms, because otherwise they actually look like, uh, um, like proper U S <laughs> soldiers. Um, they're, 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 they're very clearly like the more well regulated militia, which makes actually a little bit of sense given that they're, fucking texas so um so okay so we've got uh the new people's army then we've got the loyalist states um that seems to be most of america um or half of america I well, should like say. the ones that are fighting on behalf of the president the, the evil nick offerman president i guess yeah and they're um they're uh, like like that, that's the blue faction and to be honest with you is like they're they're a pretty unbroken chunk just like the new people's army and and then there's also the florida alliance and she this is uh, we would be fighting on the same team you yeah know? yeah We're, that's, I, where, that's where we are yep yep you're in one, uh, one of the florida alliance states and i'm in one of the florida alliance states now one question i have is why the fuck did we choose the name florida alliance of all the states <laughs> My guess would be, I think, out of all those states, it's got the highest population. My my head canon is that it's because Disney basically owns Orlando. They like they own Florida, and they're like funding this faction. I think that's oh that's what I think that's what's going on here. Okay, but like to be to be clear here about like how this map is drawn up, you'll you'll notice how the loyalist states seem to be just in. New Mexico and Arizona, like completely cutting off the Western forces that are in Texas and California. So like how they ever, how the Western forces rather ever posed any kind of threat when they're completely divided by their, the, you know, the loyalist states. Like I, I have no idea. What if, yeah, like, okay. So what if uh, there's a part of California that needs some type of resources transported to them from the, uh, like, like from Texas, like what does Texas do? 
there are three options, and that's cutting through, I guess, technically four, but one of them doesn't make any fucking sense. And I'll be sending resources through the loyalist states. The second option would be uh, going through Mexico, which is going um, through Mexico. Third option would be uh, going through the Panama Canal, which would be so inefficient, so slow, terrible, terrible idea. Like, there's a reason uh, the United States is such a powerful country. It's because it's got, you know, strong ports on both sides of the country for imports and export. It's no issue at all. We can fucking drop shit off wherever. Mick Juggins um, asks, uh, sorry to ask, but I have a memory disability. Could someone give me a TLDR of this? So we are talking about Alex Garland's uh, A24 produced Civil War film. And what we have on screen is a map of the four different factions that are fighting in this movie. The New People's Army up in the uh, northwestern states are irrelevant. Then you have the Loyalist states, which are basically the, like the uh, the. Equi the equivalent to the Union, basically. Um, and then you have the Florida Alliance, and then you have the Western forces. So, um, Certainly the map of all time. <laughs> so yeah, this is out. And again, we don't know anything about... Uh, like I don't, I don't think we, we even have any mention of the New People's Army in the actual movie. But in terms of the two main forces that are in opposition to the American government, we have Florida Alliance and the Western forces. I have no idea what either faction is interested in and why they've waged this war. So this is all speculation, but like, why, like, are they in line? Are they in league with each other? Are they enemies with one another? Like, My, you know, are Texas and Oklahoma warring with each other while Oklahoma is also warring with the States above it? Like, I'm, I think I'm, Oklahoma would be fucking, you know, I, 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 okay, so, by the two different factions, you know what I mean? Like, I yeah, think it's just sandwiched between them like that. Like, it's a very in op, like suboptimal position to be in. I think that the best faith assumption is that the um, the New People's Army and the Western forces are aligned together. Um, so I guess that the Western forces could potentially receive um, like aid from you know the, like Oregon and the the New People's Army. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing is um, I think that it would just make more sense if just Nevada and New Mexico were also a part of the Western forces. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know why they have to be loyal I mean, states. Arizona, too, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be weird. It's, it's weird that they're not part of this. So, OK. But and then and speaking of weird, Chief, I think there's just one more problem with the like which states are fighting with which states. Can you can you think about about like what what the uh, the um, I, I can't I can't quite put my finger on this exactly. So here's the thing about um, and I'm speaking as a as someone who was born and raised in Texas, Texas and California don't exactly agree on much. <laughs> and I, I'm actually someone born in California. <laughs> they are basically like ideologically opposed in every sense of the term. Like they, you could not find more like opposite states oh jolly wants to join yeah hey jolly I, hello <laughs> i didn't even know he was in this chat <laughs> yeah oh, I, sent, I sent the link to the other chat that he is in okay yeah. my bad uh no uh, so, actually what happened cool. is you sent you, you sent <laughs> no no you sent your link in the main group chat and then like, like yeah like in the group that's chat what i mean i then... accidentally sent it to the one that jolly was in i thought i i sent it to the whatever it doesn't matter no hey, i sent it Oh, you asshole! Why don't yeah. you YouTube? Because he asked. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, hey, I mean, Jolly. You, like, I mean, I'm genuinely. If you don't want me, then I can just leave. That's fine. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I want you here. It's just get out of here, you Frenchman. I, I was just, you know, I was <laughs> just jump scared by Jolly. Well, we can, <laughs> we can. Well, we can turn this from Stephen Southpaw explain a twenty four Civil War to the sea to we explain this to the sea and Jolly. Yeah. Make it even more livelier. All right, um, <clears throat> even Wonderful. more livelier. Great, so Jolly. Jolly, what do you what do you have to say about this map? Uh, I don't necessarily see a problem with the map, but then I haven't seen the movie, so there might be something in the movie that would make this map logistically impossible. But just, just I can think of a lot of things on the basis of this map. <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> um, I, I, but just based on this map, I don't see necessarily any issue with with that being the map of a of a civil war. Also, weren't um weren't the main characters because they they started out in new york and they were on their way to dc yes right yes so they would have just been in loyalist states like lo like lo loyalist territory the entire time right pretty much That's and like yet, a like, six hour drive isn't it 
And yet there there are uh, Western forces and Florida Alliance soldiers that are, you know, currently in those territories. Fighting. Right, but this is, yeah, but right, this, but this map isn't a territory map, right? This is just a map of which states are involved on which side. Mm -hmm. so, sure. I, so this map doesn't necessarily reflect like who has what territory under what occupation. At least by the point, at least at least by the point that the movie is, starts at. Sure. Yeah. No, that's fair. Because I was listening. Yeah. I was listening to you th to things like you saying, like how does California supply Texas or vice versa? Which I mean, like, my, other than oil, I'm not sure what California would want from Texas. Like, California is a much more resource laden state than than Texas is, which is a large desert. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I mean, but, like, like medical that, supplies. That corridor maybe. of land between the two of them is probably under occupation by this point because California and Texas between them have the majority of the economy and the majority of the manpower of the United States. Well, uh, it, you know what? Ammunition would also be a, a pretty important one that Texas could supply to California. I bet. That's true. I have no idea. How, like, does California have a lot of gun factories? I can, I can gun imagine. Factories? California, um, California is a very not gun friendly state, and Texas is the most gun friendly state in the U.S. Yeah, and too, I'm pretty sure wouldn't uh, Texas also be a bit more of a manufacturing power in that sense for specifically weapons? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, like, they'd be for heavy armaments and like physical material. They'd have more. They'd have more on the ground. But when it comes to like high tech resources, like things for like guided missile chips and stuff like that, California would be really valuable to have on side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing, though, about this entire map. Um, you don't you you don't get any sense of this in the movie. You have no idea what states belong to which faction at any given point, um, or nor do you know which factions even exist and what they like, and like what they want and why they're fighting this war. Which is my main issue. Well, that would you, probably be because do you necessarily need to. Uh yes, I, I think so. Yeah. So why? Well, because um, they're kind of trying to do this thing where because the main characters are these like sort of impartial or at least trying to be impartial journalists. Um, we never because we don't really know what faction represents what ideology, uh, why this war is happening or anything like that. We don't necessarily know like what the opinions of each of the characters are and, and like in terms of like what they're trying to put aside so they can do their jobs objectively. We just know they, they probably do have opinions. Um but they're not they're not voicing them and they're just they're just continuing to uh to photograph w what's happening um like, correct me if i'm wrong because I've, i was like i haven't seen the movie but from what i'm told the president is on his third term right like that's yes. one of the things mm -hmm. in the movie yeah i mean so at the very least we can we can say that the loyalist states are having at the very least a crisis of democracy because i'm fairly sure presidents aren't supposed to have three <laughs> terms. The only way they there's, a, uh, there's a law or two a vice yeah they're yeah. vice president and they, they take over from a previous president who's like died in office or something like that, that could work, but you can't. You I'm can't pretty sure that's not allowed as well. Like, I'm pretty sure if well, that no. happens, like, if you take, you know, I'm pretty sure, like, if, if you inherit someone's term, that counts as your term. Like, you don't get another, you don't get to have a, a, a second election and get a, a well, full second, you know, full third term. Well, hey, m maybe it could just be the case that in in the universe of this film is set in uh, presidents just have three terms. Maybe it's not that big of a deal for him to have a third term. <laughs> I mean, it could be, but let's 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 be fair. I think the movie is, is you know, if, if a movie is like yeah. this is a movie about a civil war happening in the United States, and they're like the president's on his third term, they, I think they it's are reasonable. Like that's a factor. They they are trying to yeah, they are trying to communicate that. I, I, that's just a joke. Um, okay, so. Uh, here, my my thing about this movie is that um, the backdrop. So, the the premise of a modern civil war in the United States is is uh, I think naturally appealing. I think that's that's an interesting premise that you can work with. However, it's very much just a backdrop for what's basically just a movie about uh, wartime journalists and doesn't say anything about um, like the, the basically what caused the war, what the war is being fought over. The meaning of anything it's just basically a film about wartime journalists which is like the the story of this movie honestly would not change if you um if you set it in a country where there is actually like a civil war going on like syria right um where we're like like the this sort of thing is actually like quite plausible to happen um uh it, and that's i guess that um what alex garland wants to do is because there there certainly is uh something about the the actual imagery of the uh of the u.s actually being like war torn by a civil war like this um as opposed to uh, some like country like yemen or syria where it's unfortunately become just kind of like um expected in countries like these um 
However, I just, I, I think that like the, the story, the, the core story that Alex Garland wants to tell with the characters, I think works perfectly fine. If you just simply have it set in one of those countries instead of the U S it just doesn't Why? do anything. I, I, I guess, I guess, Maybe just because I'm the only outsider here, the only non-American in the chat, but I feel like there is a kind of level, I, just from witnessing the dialogue around this movie, there's a level of which like a lot of Americans are like, oh, that can never happen here because we're like a we're like a you know a more democratically elevated country. Like this doesn't happen here. Like oh, no, I fully believe it can happen ass. here. No, I fully believe it can happen here. That's definitely not the premise that I'm going off of. I'm saying that that the execution here for the world building is shit. Right, but like. This, uh, there's two things here, right? Which is that if you're if you're saying like realistic to real life, then yeah, sure. But I think a very deliberate concerted effort has been made to make this film as apolitical as possible in terms of taking a particular side. And I think that's been done for very specific reasons, both artistically and financially. Financially, mm -hmm. obviously, you don't want to piss off half of the country who's going to buy tickets to your film because that's just a bad <laughs> move. And like artistically, I think Alex Garland's on record as saying that he's not trying to make a political statement about like Republicans versus Democrats or anything that's going on with actual American politics, and much more so trying to make a commentary about like how democracies in general even like the biggest ones are susceptible to fall inwards if they're not carefully maintained and like it, it, more so focusing on the role of journalism and how journalists have been sort of demonized by the press in recent years um mm -hmm. ironically um so like i'm i'm happy you know, for the, the movie, movie to take but... an apolitical stance on uh like our real world politics like i think that's good and i think that works the problem is again that they try to also then frame the president a certain way instead of being like remaining neutral on that front well, what like, way I do they try to get? Like, I, I genuinely haven't seen. So, what way do they try to frame him? They frame him as a corrupt and cowardly and just overall bad president. And uh, I mean, yeah, the whole three terms thing is definitely like an indic so, like indicative that he probably isn't a good person. Maybe he is, though. Maybe he thought that that was the best way to lead the, the loyalists out of this war. Okay, so we have know. three terms. We have disbanding the FBI. We have airstrikes against uh, uh, U.S. citizens. Um, I'm trying to think of like what what was the other question that uh Sammy was asking in the car to Joel? I can't remember. I, th I think you covered it. I think that was all. Is, is the FBI no, um, was was the FBI disbanded as a prelude to the war? Like was that one of the one of the things that started the war, or was it happening? After no the war, idea. You know, after the states had already fragmented. Not I a clue. Think, I think that um uh Sammy was basically saying like in retrospect, do you regret uh, disbanding the FBI? So it could be a thing where like that happened before the civil war itself happened because I, I don't know why you would disband the FBI in the middle of a civil war if you were the president. I just don't know why you would at all because the film doesn't tell me why they did it. I mean, I, it. Con considering there are actual Republicans in real life calling for the, the, the defunding and the, dis and the destruction of the FBI, I think we can take at least some educated guesses as to the kinds of people who might want that and why. So does that mean uh, that the president is Republican? No, not necessarily. It's just like, you know, there are reasons why people, bad, why bad faith actors, regardless of a party they're in, might want the FBI gone. And like, you know, I'm sure Matt Gates has plenty of reasons why he doesn't want to be investigated. <laughs> <in federal crimes. laughs> okay, um, but, that, but then also my question is, does the president have the, the authority, like the power to disband the FBI? I think so. It's a federal agency, right? And he's the chief executive officer of the federal branch of government. So I presume yeah, but he does have the authority to shut it down. Well, yeah, but the thing about the, like, the federal power is that it's very, like, displaced. You don't want to give too much to one person. That's why we have checks and balances. Unless you're the Supreme Court. <laughs> and, then, and then you're all for it. <laughs> like, I feel no, like, I, 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 don't, I don't know the logistics about this necessarily, but I feel like there would be a lot of interested parties in like, hey, why the fuck are you disbanding the Federal Bureau of Investigations? Yeah. <laughs> right, but that could, that could literally be one of the causes, right? If an out-of-control president is like, I refuse to allow myself to be investigated or my party to be investigated or my, my ideology to be investigated, so I'm shutting down the FBI because I, I'm just going to claim they're ideological hacks in, in hoc to the enemy, whether that's internal or external. Okay, that but might then... well be like a huge overreach that causes states to be like, oh shit. Okay, yeah, but then that seems to be framing the president as the villain, like objectively, at that point. I mean, it, but like you, civil wars can have both, like both sides of a civil war can be bad. Mm -hmm. Sure, but we haven't been told anything about the leaders of either, like any of the other factions. So I don't know. I don't know again, necessarily again, like, what to make of them. But again, I'm not quite sure why we need to. I mean, like if the film is focused as just meant to be, you know, this is what it's like being a journalist in a, in a, in a civil war zone. And it just happens to be a civil war zone set in America because they're trying to make a point that it can happen anywhere. I'm not quite sure why the film by default has to tell you who the quote unquote good guys or bad guys, or even make sure that there are good guys or bad guys in this scenario are. Well, I don't think I, I, I would say that the film would be better if there were no good guys or bad guys depicted. But the, again, they do that with the president. 
Uh, don't the Western forces like do have a mass civilian grave at some point in the movie, or am I? No, that is not. That is was that. Uh, so those are not the Western forces. So uh, was that, that the Florida Alliance? Um, so what happens is there are uh, so according to Wikipedia, um, the six encounter extremist and nationalist militia soldiers who execute civilians and bury them in a mass grave. And those are that's that's Jesse Plemons' character. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not given a clear idea as to uh, what faction these guys are a part of. Uh, if anything, I mean, to me, these guys seem to be a part of like the uh, like like loyalists. If anything, I mean, whatever they are, they're very anti anything that's not American. Because there's also like there's also a sequence with um, with a rogue sniper, what kind of American. <laughs> well, I, I, well, that's the thing. It's like it seems to be that any American is good. Like. Like um, yeah. he asks all the different characters where they're from, you know, they'll say like Colorado, Missouri, Florida. And then one of them was like, I'm from Hong Kong, just gets shot immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Basically, like, like from there's like, okay, whoever these guys are with, they're just extremely nationalist. Yeah. Don't know who they, I don't know who they support in this war. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I guess if they're nationalists, that's probably the loyalists, just because they're the one, like, if they're, like, nationalists like, to, to America in particular, that seems like a loyalist position, right? I mean, again, that's, that's I could be completely wrong, but that's just they're, usually how But wouldn't every faction factions see themselves as the true America? Well, they're so also like sure, China but most China most most rebel most rebel forces, like, when you're the rebel forces against a larger government, you tend to need outside support a lot more. So, like, for example, during, you know, the US Civil War, the actual US Civil War, the Confederacy was desperately trying to seek foreign support from, like, Britain and France and stuff, because they just needed it. Like, That's regardless true. of how they thought about them as nations, um, they were like, we just need these guys on side because we need the resources. So we're fighting a larger enemy. Right. Um, I'm stop sharing like, that now because I think we've covered that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But again, like I have no idea what resources are in play because, like, I would imagine California and Texas, if they're an alliance, have basically the bulk of the resources because they are the two biggest, you know, economic states at, and and the two biggest population states. I think as well, aren't they? So, mm -hmm. I know it, well, but at the same time, it's just like uh, we have. Um, uh, well, again, there's a there's a uh, there's three loyalist states in between Texas and California, and then we also have, or a, a minimum of two. And then we also have uh, just the simple fact of like, what on earth happened to unite Texas and California is what I'm really curious about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, though, I, I mean, even in with real real world politics, right? Like, I, if I remember correctly, Texas has been like, while still technically a red state, has been trending more and more blue as time goes on. Mm -hmm. The Republicans um, would say that's because Californians are infiltrating Texas. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> God bless you, Republicans! You mad bastards! You. <laughs> um, but like, I could, I can imagine, like in like 2030, Texas being, if not a blue state, then a purple state. Like, I mean, like in the way Arizona currently is, you know, where it teeters in between. Mm. Hmm. It's like a um, in which state, case, like, then. yeah. So, like, if it happened to be like, a, you know, a, a, like if if the civil war broke out when Texas, like, say, happened to have a Democratic governor at the same time as the California had a Democratic governor. Um, and depending on exactly what it was that caused the fight in the first place, I could imagine the two like just like joining forces, even if it's just a marriage of convenience, because like you know they don't have to like each other; they just have to hate the enemy more. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a big shame that this movie had a great opportunity to create some really interesting world building and stuff. Maybe either play on some real world political discourse or just not make up some new type of political discourse that would cause a civil war. Um, I mean. Because I'll the, agree with you in, as in our as current I... day and age, we can't really have a civil war that's between physical borders rather than just constant fucking chaos in the streets. Adam, like... you, <clears throat> Adam Lismore, you racist. Jolly is not British. He's he's Scottish. Point being, the French. biggest political divide in uh, America today is not necessarily between borders. It's more so between just neighbors. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just it's a weird. It's just a weird missed opportunity not to try and either frame a situation where there would be some sort of uh, conflict between borders. Um, but whatever. Um, but Jolly, because you asked the question of why I think it's necessary that we do understand, at least uh, to, a, to an extent, like what these factions represent and why they're fighting their war. I think it's more like in more in terms of like why, like the film is, is, is trying to be about these journalists who try to remain objective in the face of absolute horrors, like watching people get gunned down, let like set on fire and that sort of thing. And I think it would help that greatly if we understood at least to an extent 
where they came from and what like what their positions are or were that they are trying to set aside uh, to be objective. Then we then we have a better understanding of like what it what like which factions they um they're more uh what, what what am i trying to say like more sympathetic to which ones they uh they absolutely despise um you know like on the down low without without ever saying that out loud that sort of thing i just think it would have helped them, the film a lot better if they did that yeah uh fair enough i mean i i think i'll agree with you and see in that it certainly sounds like the movie <sighs> I don't know if cowardly is the right word, right? But like had an opportunity here to be a bit more brave in, in the kind of discourse it was willing to take on and sort of just pass the buck a little bit. Um, uh, I, mean, I mean, that's uh, that's about as much as I can say for that. Like, I don't think intrinsically the movie had to do that to be a good movie. I, mm -hmm. I agree, though, that I think it would have had a lot more teeth to it and therefore like could have reached for a much higher standard than would otherwise be possible um, if it hadn't decided I mean to sit on the fence quite so hardly. I don't know. Hard. I don't. I don't. I don't know that I'm as harsh to this movie as Southpaw is because I came out and said it was a five, and he was like, "I don't think I could give it any higher than a four. I just think it was something that like had a lot of interesting uh, concepts and a neat enough premise, um, and it did some. It did some interesting things with a couple of the characters, but like it never went as far as I think it needed to, or like it, or as far as it yeah. could have to be truly good or great. Well, we're just, so we're just talking about like the, the the very premise of like the backdrop of this movie, right? Yeah, we were just so, setting the stage because then we're like, gonna actually talk about the story a little bit. Yeah, because like so, uh, we're, I think what, what we're just be doing here is like we're just making it clear like the world building in this movie is not strong at all. Hmm. Um, there's hardly like any effort that's put into it, if, if anything. It, again, for reasons of like I, I think they're just they're they're trying to avoid uh, offending. Um, like as like certain types. Which I would of call cowardly. I would call that yeah. very cowardly. I, I would just say if you're going to make a movie about an American Civil War, just just go all in. Just yeah, so you can't thought, really avoid the real world stuff if you're going to. I do saw that, a I comment. Think. When did I ever say that soldiers aren't taught to dehumanize each other? When have I ever said that? Huh? <laughs> ben Shaban, explain yourself. <laughs> No. The ruling class <laughs> wants you to hate your neighbor dog. Okay, I'm just gonna ignore this guy from now on. <laughs> oh, He's kind of spamming. Just, what? I just like I just like the idea that you're like someone's like the, the, the ruling class is trying to turn you against your neighbor. And you're like, cool. I hate my neighbor. Fuck my neighbor. <laughs> right finger licking. Fuck. Also, several minutes ago, I got like three different super chats that I haven't had a chance to address yet. So before we move on, okay, nerd. All right. Do it. Got one from Crossover Four for one ninety nine. See you guys. I guess he left us. Oh no. See you, Crossover. Trader. And then one from Sam Montgomery. Hey, for five pounds. Hey guys, film is out tomorrow in the UK. Unsure if I should see it. Money's uh, money's in cinema is uh, way uh, a ways away. Would you recommend it? I wouldn't. No. Um, Save your money. Is, I don't know. If if yeah, if you live uh, like more than thirty minutes away from uh, from a theater and money is a uh, is like an issue, I don't recommend this movie. Um, if if money is nothing and if the movie is if the theater is like 15 20 minutes away um and you've got nothing better to do then sure why not i guess check it out and even see if you, you have get. nothing better to do i'm sure the theater is playing something else that you'd rather watch right like so dune, 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 like if, if, if we were talking about like dune part two or something or top gun maverick i'd say absolutely go go see this fucking movie i i two thumbs up but with something like this is like uh, it's kind of a gamble i think you might want to wait until until this is streaming and maybe you'll like it but I, uh, I I I can't give him uh, the context of what you've just said. I, uh, I I can't I can't give a ringing endorsement like that. Yeah, and then I got a two dollars super chat from Crystal Customs. Keep up the great work, Sheev. I love the Clone Wars vids. Why? Thank you. Hell yeah. Terrible videos. I did see that they had <laughs> commented a bit later that I missed their super chat, and I apologize for that. But I was just you know not trying to obstruct the flow of conversation any. Yeah. I wonder again because I'm not terribly keyed into this kind of discourse. Are, are people in America like because I, the thing I would imagine right is even when you try to be super apolitical with this movie that like people are just going to read themselves into it regardless or read the people they don't like into it regardless. Like, have we had any mad? Like, has Carrie Lake, for example, come out and been like, "Screw this movie for depicting Republicans as evil" or anything like that? <laughs> I, I, I've certainly. I don't know how you would read yourself into any one of these factions because that's the thing is like I don't know anything about them. Yeah, I've certainly seen um, like a lot of Republicans basically uh, or, or conservatives trying to argue that like this is some sort of like there's an anti-Trump message in this or something. And, and 
well, in, in, I guess using identity politics to go, well, you see the bad guy in the movie is a white male and all the good guys in this movie are oh, not white males. So, where, you know, that's, where, where, that's, that's what I've seen. Yeah. It, 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 the, the anti-wokesters are, are, are taking that approach basically. Um, I'm sorry. If you, if you looked at Nick Offerman's character and read Trump in that, that's, I think that's more indicative of you. Yeah, I don't... Uh, because he's nothing like Trump. The only the only similarities is that, is that they're both white males and they were both president. The um, even why he's yellow. Or, or... Honestly, he is. <laughs> honestly, if there's a president, if, if there's a real president that he has any resemblance to, it would be like Richard Nixon, who like and funny enough, oh, uh, Watchmen. Watchmen is a story in which Richard Nixon has a third term. So <laughs> that's why he's the go. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right. Uh, okay, so what, 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 we were talking about the the disbandment of the FBI. Uh, we we're talking about um, oh the <laughs> that led us to then talking about how the American how the U.S. is is broken up into four factions in this movie. Um, I would I guess, not have been able to tell you that from watching the movie. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I guess we wanted to like go ahead and try to start breaking it down like the 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 story chronologically, Sheev. Yeah, I guess. Um... I, I didn't have a lot of notes for a lot of it. It was, it was re- I mean, cause again, I think they did a lot of interesting things. Um, mm. So like, cause we start off um, with Kirsten Dunst. She's in her like hotel room in there in New York uh, and she, and uh, what's his name? Joel. Yeah. So, so well, 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 first off we have Nick Offerman doing his thing where he is like, you know, practicing before he is recording an address or, and, and then or yeah, but we kind of already talked about that. Yeah. I was kind of, then yeah. yeah, so then we cut to Kirsten Dunst in a hotel room watching uh, the president's dress, and there is there are some explosions going off in the distance. Um, mm-hmm. And then the next thing that's happening, which I guess tells us that like the war has come to New York. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, and 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 so the very next scene, it's it's um it's like in the middle of the day, and what exactly is going on there? Like, uh, is there like some sort of protest happening or? Uh, it seems like it's a protest. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. So there's a protest happening and Kirsten Dunst is there and she's, you know, shooting it with her camera basically. Uh, and I don't think Joel was here. Um, I remember that she meets Jesse. He was um, there. I saw him cause he was, he, he was there talking to some guy. Right. I remember. Okay. And then he had like, he had one of the reflective vests on. Right. Uh, now she, I'm not sure if you took notes. I didn't take any notes at I all because take notes. Yeah, I was in a theater and I wasn't going to have my phone out taking notes while I was in the theater. Um, uh, unless like, unless there was like no one else in the theater. Uh, but unfortunately, that's that wasn't the case here. So um, then there was a point where Kirsten Dunst is talking with uh, Jesse. Um, uh, sorry, Kirsten Dunst's character's name is Lee. Yeah, um, I guess, I guess we, we, we don't have to keep calling her Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, we can, <laughs> we can call her MJ or Lee. Uh, Lee. Um, <laughs> It uh, basically sees someone running um, into this crowd where there's like a bunch of uh, riot uh, um, officers, uh, well, police officers in riot gear um, dealing with protesters. And um, she sees a, a person charging uh, into this crowd with an American flag. And she sees this as a sign that something bad is going to happen. And she gets uh, Jesse, the... Um, the, the like, up and coming like new newbie who's trying to get into this this game of uh, war I'm photography. Gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you, Sheev. Based on the trailer that I saw, I thought that Jesse was like Lee's 16 year old sister or something, <laughs> or daughter. Like, oh yeah, didn't they really say she was 23? Face. Yeah, they say she's 23. She does not look 23. I assumed she was like maybe maybe 15, 16 years old. But yeah, then, and then but then when Joel was like, yeah, I'm taking her on uh, like to. Uh, was in Charlottesville with us. I was like, yeah, she's like 23. And I'm like, oh, okay, shit. Okay. I can't wait until we get to that part. Okay. So yeah. Uh, uh Lee Lee gets uh gets Jesse to take cover behind a police car. And I guess the person that was charging to the crowd with an American flag had a suicide bomb vest and it goes off and it kills a bunch of people. He's literally uh, yeah. Right, right. Um the the uh, the audio uh, like cuts out completely, um, and I honestly think that's a nice change of pace from. I thought it was neat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's way better than when they have the the high pitched ringing. That's like a huge cliche. Mm-hmm. Um, well, one, one thing I'll note throughout the entire movie is that like there are a lot of silent moments. Like if if mm-hmm. like a big battle is happening or a big gunfight, 
as soon as it cuts to like the photo that they're taking, like you hear the snap sound and then it's just like a few seconds of silence. And I thought that really broke it up nicely. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly did not have a problem with the editing in the, um, in the action sequence. Well, or I shouldn't say action sequences so much as the war sequences, you know, um, uh, or shootout sequences. Um, I will say that there's, there's one thing I don't like about the editing in this movie it would be uh, like three or four different needle drops in this movie. Um, I was kind mm -hmm. of baffled by the use of uh, licensed music in several. They felt out of place in a, yeah. in a few different, a few different areas, especially when uh, when Sammy dies. It almost what? It, 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 he died. Yeah. What? Yeah. They play. What do they play? I don't know. I've never heard the song before, but it didn't Hello, feel Dolores like... Hello, Dolores Wild Friend. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a song that you would imagine like playing in a movie after a character dies. Unless you were watching a comedy. That's the thing is that these needle drops come across as though like... Because um, what, what, what comedies will often do is, you know, for comedic effect, they will have um, like a... like. A licensed song of a completely different tone playing over a certain scene, and the juxtaposition is where the comedy comes from, right? Like that's that's the, yeah, that's what's funny about it. Yeah, the problem is, uh, <laughs> um, this isn't a comedy; it's not played for laughs. So, see, when you mentioned that, I was thinking of uh, Angel in the Morning, Deadpool, and now I'm just yeah. imagining that song over someone dying. I was oh. listening to that on the way, like as I was walking to the theater and thinking uh, about so, Deadpool. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm just looking this up on IMDb to try to find the um, the licensed songs, and uh, in <laughs> that's what shows up. Connections featured in Nerdrotic Woke Hollywood Civil War. <laughs> oh my god! I told I told oh. you I told you someone was going to misread this Fucking bullshit. Hell. Yeah, uh, you can always count on Nerdrotic to to do that sort of thing. Um. I'd love to know what he has to say about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> would you? Would you really? I'd well, love if Nerd Roddick was on one of your streams. That'd be funny as shit. Just roast the shit out of him. That'd be mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, I just, just spend the entire stream just asking him why he's so just fucking Just taking crazy. fucking pot shots one after another. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, um, besides that, like, like, like honestly, uh, up to the point where um, the suicide bombing occurs, everything I think in the movie is like, fine so far um yeah i was happy uh, with it and then we get to the hotel scene and it, and again there's nothing really wrong with this moment so it establishes that joel joel and lee want to travel down to washington dc to interview the president um because joel suspects that the western forces are going to move in on washington dc for the fourth of july and try to win the war right there because of obviously mm -hmm. the symbolism of winning such a war on the fourth of july is major um uh and then i'm not entirely sure what i remember that like um lee B sorry, sorry sammy um two fears uh character sammy uh, uh basically expresses that he wants to um come along with them they are skeptical of course because sammy is much oh. much older yeah he walks with they, the they mention it like 50 times that he's old yeah. and can't really get around much that's basically his character um He's so, just kind of in the back seat for the whole movie. Yeah. Uh giving sage advice every now and then to the younger character. He's I think that he's like supposed to be the mentor of Joel. Is he? I don't I, I didn't really get much of any kind of dynamic between the two. Well, okay, so uh according to Wikipedia, it says Stephen McKinley Henderson as Sammy, a veteran journalist as and Lee and Joel's mentor. So so okay, so he's a mentor for both Lee and Joel. I got a little bit of that with him and Lee, but like Joel was just kind of also there. Yeah. I, um, I, I guess. I, 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 well, here's the thing is Joel also has the most emotional reaction to his death. So there is that. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I guess there is that. You know, it's actually, if, if we could skip ahead again, the way he reacted to Sammy's death was, you know, the way I would expect someone who's <laughs> lost like a dear friend of many years, but like, when Lee gets shot at the end of the movie, which I don't know if they were painting that as she died or that she was protected by the Kevlar vest and she was just knocked mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. um, Cause either she died and they just didn't go to see if she was okay or she was alive, but they still didn't check to see if she was okay. <laughs> and I thought, that was just really weird. My point is Lee gets shot and I'm pretty sure she's Joel's girlfriend, right? Or mm, I, I don't, 
they never really hint at, 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 at like a romantic uh, relationship between the two of them. Mm, well, I, I I don't know. That's why I was. They're asking. friends. I, well, I, they're, they're they're clearly friends, and they yeah. they travel together a lot. So, I um, guess that the the one the one defense I could possibly give is um, the difference here is that uh, when Sammy dies, they are at a Western Forces military base, and they are safe. They are not in a war zone. In the case of Lee, she gets shot in the middle of a, a, of a firefight in the White House. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, wow. All the more reason to make sure to like get her to a safe position if she is alive or at the very least to spend five seconds checking just to make sure. I suppose. Right. Because like the Western forces. Right along. Yeah. Because the Western forces then then actually like advance down the corridor and you would think that Lee would. Yeah. Try to like because here's the thing is she doesn't even get her head blown off or anything. It just seems like she gets shot in the back. I'm like. Mm -hmm. That's she's, that, that's she's probably fine. I think I think the movie leaves it ambiguous on purpose. Mm, well, um, according to Wikipedia, it says that uh, Lee is killed saving Jesse from the crossfire. Oh, so she, she did die. She, she photographs the death of. Well, that's the thing is like it, it's. He it, didn't react at all. Yeah, like the movie literally it makes it very dramatic in that that uh, Jesse photographs Lee as she gets shot. Which uh -huh. is like if she was if she doesn't get killed, then I don't know why dramatize that at all. But we'll get, we'll get to that because <laughs> that, that um, how this happens is bullshit. Um, the next yeah. thing, but okay. So I guess really the first, um, well, well, before we move on to the first, I, I think the first problem with the, uh, story in the movie. Um, so, uh, Lee wants to go to her hotel room and while she's going there, um, like she wants to take the elevator and do you remember the, um, the hotel concierge saying something about like, there is, there's like power issues or yeah, something. They, we, we were shown that there were like, like random power outages in this hotel and yeah. they've been happening like nightly at this point. So he said, he, he advises like, you know, you're welcome to use the elevator, but it might just, you know, like the power might go out on the way up to your room and like that could delay your trip. And she um, has to walk up 10 flights of stairs, um, mm -hmm. cause she's on the 10th floor. Um, now, while she's going to the staircase, uh, she actually then run like walks into Jesse for the second time um, th after like well the first time after saving her life from the suicide bombing. Yeah. Um. So uh, they're talking like a little bit, and um, Lee kind of it's basically a vibe of of like uh, Jesse clearly wants to um, uh, become a more experienced like war journalist. And Lee seems very much skeptical of it and doesn't really think that like she's suited for this, especially given like how young and baby face she is. Yeah. Um, so then uh, the next scene is Lee's in it, like, like taking a bath and she's having like flashbacks to when she was a journalist in some middle Eastern country, um, middle Eastern or African country. Um, it's kind of ambiguous as to uh, where it like it is exactly. Um, but they're just kind of like showing like, right. She's, you know, um, Lee has seen some shit. Um, and then the very next scene is when Lee and Joel and Sammy are all going to travel to um, DC and Lee is going down uh, to rendezvous with, uh, with, with Joel and Sammy. And they're, they have a, they have another passenger with them. Jesse. <laughs> so yeah, um, Joel has invited this like, you know, wet behind the ears, like young girl uh, who apparently is um, an adult, I guess. I did not get that from her, but whatever. She's 23. He's invited her along, um, which the girl in the, in the thumbnail of this, the girl in the thumbnail of the stream, by the way, that's Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's young. She's, yeah. she's been at this for a very short amount of time. Um, and they're about to, they're literally going into the belly of the beast, essentially. They're, they're traveling to DC and, and this is a very, they've made it very explicitly clear that this is a dangerous place to be, like, like, like travel, like a, a route that they're traveling. They also um, are racing against time. They've got a ticking clock to get to DC before the Western forces do to have an interview with the president. Yeah. So I have a question, Sheev. Uh, if this is, if time is of the essence and you are trying to get a uh, an interview with the president before uh, the Western forces invade DC. Would you decide to uh, have a a baby face, wet behind the ears, twenty three year old newbie war uh, wartime journalist tag along with you? 
No. I I this is like I this mean, is like I guess first... it depends. I guess it depends on the context, right? Again, so I haven't seen so maybe you can fill me in here, but mm. a lot of war journalists, so particularly in places like Gaza or the Middle East, like you, you usually have like people on the ground to get recruited and they tend to be quite young. So you have like war correspondents who are local journalists from the local population and they'll have been volunteered their services and they'll be filming on their phones and all that mm. kind of stuff. Um, so I wonder whether whether Jessie is meant to be that right, like that she that she has sort of been already been into dangerous situations or that she was re- essentially doing amateur war reporting from these areas already and so as far as they're concerned like she's if an experience at least like has made it clear that she's going to be doing this with or with or without them regardless well so the problem here is that uh in the context of this movie and what um joel and lee and sammy are, are trying to set up to do the idea here is that this is like like this is the 11th hour of this civil war basically they are pretty sure that it's coming to a close pretty soon and the um the window for uh, getting an in, in, in interview with the president, with President Nick Offerman, is closing. So in this context, I don't think it really makes sense for them to allow Jesse to tag along when it's like time is of the essence here, right? Um, if this were in a different context, um, if this were, were like in the middle of the war or like, you know, like towards the start of it, I can I can understand this. I'm not saying there's a there's an issue with them wanting to bring along someone like Jesse in all contexts. I think that in this context, though, I don't think it makes any sense whatsoever for them to uh, be remotely okay with this, especially given that like okay. like Joel is actually the one who actually really like like it really it's Joel who is the one that seems to be the most driven to have this uh, interview with the president because uh, Sammy even says that this is crazy because um, they actually shoot journalists on site in D.C. Which actually, uh, if that were the case, yeah. go ahead, Jolly. <laughs> I, I mean, I was about to ask, right? Like, so the, the plan is to go to DC and get an interview with the president of the United States, Mr. Yes. Third Term. Um, and the Civil War is coming to an end. Like, DC is imminently about to be ground invaded. Yes. Why is, if I, if I, my first question is, why is the president still there? Why hasn't he been evacuated? <laughs> and, second, oh. and, and secondly, <laughs> like, what, he's, they think he's going to be willing to grant an interview, like, with the, yeah. with the, with the, with the gates? <laughs> yes. And then, and that was a question like, I was well, going to ask just, earlier. Is let, like, let, is let me just take a break from my war planning to do this. Yeah, it's well, like this massive civil war. They're gonna these random chuckle fucks gonna get an interview with them. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, just, I, I had to run, take care of something. What are we talking about now? Right, so we're the, talking about the weirdness of the president, uh, you know, oh, acquiescing to uh, to an interview, or at least they're thinking that he might acquiesce to an interview when the enemy is literally at the gates. <laughs> the very fucking yeah. premise of the story that is. Yeah, so like, that that was the thing that I was hanging up on when I was like, when the movie started, I was like, how do because you know, obviously he's gonna be protected by Secret Service and like his own military and like probably the White House is under guard. Um, oh. and he's been refusing. Uh, journalist interviews for like what uh, two years now they said yeah and the, the white house is super fortified in this movie um yeah. there there's con- like concrete walls surrounding it um iron bars over all the windows it is uh, it, it is the most guarded that the white house has ever looked yeah so i have no idea how they planned to get an interview with the president but that's what they were going to do um, even though uh, sammy they- rightfully called it out as a suicide mission but like then Went along with them so that he could get a ride to what was he? Where was he trying to go? Charlottesville. I think he was trying to get a ride to, to, to Charlottesville. Yeah. Do we? Yeah. Do we at least get given some kind of character reason for this? Like one of the writers is being hell bent on this. Nah. No. Oh. Joel. Okay, Joel, cool. Joel just wants to have an interview with the president. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure it would be a very big break in his career. That's, <laughs> that might be why he wants to do it. I, uh, but you can't really have a career if you get if you die. On site. yeah because <laughs> literally sammy's like are you crazy they killed journalists on site in dc mm-hmm. like <laughs> what are what and are so, you and that's one of the reasons why i'm why i'm arguing why it's a bad idea to bring this young girl along so here's the thing first off this is just a very stupid premise that we're that we're working with as we begin with mm. then on top of this they decided to bring this rookie along who surely is going to only slow them down when time is of the essence they have to get down to dc as quickly as possible yeah um i I have another question sorry about the logistics of all this which is like so normally what you do all the questions you want yeah that's what we're here for that's that's what the stream is (laughs) so like like, if you want to people people who have not seen civil war which uh, honestly it works really well because um like like i'm sure let him let him ask the question 
Well, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I know. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I was just like, can I, can I talk? Can I, can I ask? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, like, so if you're, if you're like a journalist and you're, you're, you're involved in a civil war, normally you'll be embedded with one of the armies, right? Like you'll be embedded with the advancing forces, say, on, on DC. Yeah. Like you'd be tagging behind with the Western forces, which I can right. fully imagine why. Like the Western forces probably want good PR, right, on their mm -hmm. trip in. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not quite sure why the Western forces would just allow you to go ahead of the military lines just in case you're about to tell them that you're that you know where all your troops are coming in from like that just seems well, like a bad idea so the western forces appear to be traveling in from the west naturally while yeah. uh our main characters are <laughs> you, say naturally, from the east. you say naturally as though one of the western forces main states isn't texas well while <laughs> while our characters are traveling to uh to dc from new york so they're, they're, they're coming in from a completely different direction from um, like than the Western forces, basically. Yeah, if we were to look at that map, they're probably, I mean, they're, they're in full on um, loyalist, loyalist territories, well, like the entire yeah. movie. But again, like you said, like there's probably going to be um, true. They're, they're, like, well, forces all over the place. Well, so here's know, the thing not necessarily is, beholden to where they exist theoretically well, on the map. Well, so here's the thing, right, is uh, Virginia, being where D.C. is located, naturally is a loyalist state, and there is a, uh, a a Western Forces military base in Charlottesville. Like, that is where, uh, I, I, that is actually where Sammy was trying to get to, uh, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And then by the time they, it, it's very poetic, you see, because uh, they, they, they get him there, but that's where he dies. That's where he succumbs to a, a gunshot wound. Womp womp. Womp womp. <laughs> womp womp. Look, what I said was, and you can interpret it however you want. However, and uh, this is the uh, the main point that's worth bringing up. No, you. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> yeah, y'all y'all thought I was about to say something insightful about the movie. No, shut up. So yeah, um, I, I guess that is, it, 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 what, what what I was going to say, by the way, is like. The premise of the stream, I think, works really, really well. That, that it's it's two guys who have watched the movie. Explain this to two guys who have not watched the movie, who can basically represent people in chat who are certainly tuning in because they haven't watched the movie and are trying to see if maybe the movie's worth seeing uh, or like want to know what's about what it's about without actually watching the movie. Yeah, I don't recommend Civil War. Um, I don't think it's good enough to recommend to someone. Um, well, we all know how you feel about movies called Civil War Southpaw, so we can't trust your opinion. <laughs> um, Gross bias against the concepts of civil wars. <sighs> when, when, <laughs> will, when will Chris... Chris wait, which, which Chris is he? Chris Chris, Chris? Chris yeah, that's right. I, I, kept, I kept wanting to say Hemsworth, and then I was like, I know that's wrong. Which one is Chris Evans? Captain America. Just, like, just, just busting uh, like his extraction of three. And just, like, where's shooting Robert off the Downey Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> I oh. came here to see Spider-Man. Dude, this movie would have been so much better if if if, if Tyler Rake actually did show up. Jesus Christ! Um, oh, if, can you imagine if one of the photographers had been J.K. Simmons? <laughs> oh man! Awesome. I mean, one thing that did cross my mind when we were watching it was like, oh yeah, Kirsten Dunst. Like the main thing I know her from is when she dated a photographer, but now she is a photographer. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, she, I have a question. If um, if if this character played by Kirsten Dunst saw Peter do a triple backflip, stand up from standing position, ten feet in the air, do you think that she would, able to do something Spider Man? She wouldn't even think it was newsworthy. She'd just move on. <laughs> All right. I mean, so yeah, there's a huge a, civil uh, war going on. Who gives a shit if this teenager can do a triple backflip? <laughs> Spider Man is about to come. <laughs> hey, why do we give a shit about this? <laughs> can I ask a question about that? Because again, like I, I'm just curious. Looking ahead to a different movie, like Kaylee Spaney, who is the uh, who is the girl who plays Jesse. <laughs> Um, how how good was her acting? Because she's going to be the lead in the new Alien movie, and I'm I really want that to be good. I think she so did a good job. Me. I don't I know. Think, oh, thank don't, God. We don't. So I actually don't have a problem with any, with any of the actors in this movie. Um, I think that that they all did perfectly fine. I think that Jesse, the, the scene with Jesse Plemons scene is very fucking funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, honestly, like one of my favorite things that's come out of the the, the trailer was, um, Chief, have you seen Game Night? uh no i've heard of it but i haven't God, watched it yet damn it all right someone someone made a very 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 fucking funny meme um with uh a, a still from the trailer with him in it quoting game night because he is he's in that movie game night uh but i can't really you wouldn't find it funny because you haven't seen game night so well then i guess we'll just move on then won't yeah. we yeah yeah, we will. Womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't say womp womp. Only C can say womp womp. Fuck yeah, you, Chief. 
No. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with anyone's acting in this movie. Um, in, in fact, I, I would even go as far as say, like, as I, I think that Kirsten Dunst has a really strong performance in this movie. Um, uh, I mean, Stephen McKinley Henderson is just there. He doesn't really. They don't really give him. They, a don't, they don't give him. Well. They don't give him much to do. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, again, he, was, he just basically rides the back seat the entire movie. Mm-hmm. He was it's, just uh, upset that he got cut out of Dune too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our like the the three main characters that we follow in this movie, I think, all do a a perfectly fine job. So um, three. Yeah. Are you? There's four. Well, so I don't really count him though because I, I I don't really count Sammy though compared to uh uh Jesse and Joel he, and and Lee because he's they one of the main characters. characters. He is, but they get more characterization than him. I guess. I mean, d- hang on. Does, does does Joel really get much characterization? Because we're so. mainly we're mainly focusing on on Lee and Jesse, which is fair mm-hmm. because I, I think their dynamic works pretty well, all things considered. Um, but well, I don't really think I could say much about like Joel as a, like what his character is like. I mean, so I don't know that he gets nearly as much as, as, but, so I guess that like, okay, so we get the most characterization in the movie, I think goes to Lee. Then we have Jesse and then we have Joel and then Sammy. I guess that's, that's fair. Yeah. I'm, I'm just arguing that I, uh, fucking Joel and Sammy get about as much as each other. I think. Yeah. Um, well, I honestly just disagree based on like even the scene with um Tony and uh what 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 was Tony's friend's name? Uh Tony and Bohai alone. Bohai. I feel like, yeah. I feel like there's just there's just more for uh for Joel in that particular sequence than there was for uh um for Sammy. Okay. Yeah. Where where was I with this? Um so they, so, they allowed Jesse to come along with them. Yeah. I feel like we can move on to the next point because we just we we all understand this is unbelievably stupid, right? I think so. Okay. Um, what was the okay? So I believe, I believe the very next sequence was they're just driving down to um. Well, they start driving down to to DC, and the um, the text on screen says that they're like eight hundred and fifty something miles away from DC at this point at the mm-hmm. start of the journey. Um, and uh, there's. What what I will say about this, um, as a sort of like point of praise, is just like I think that the production design is actually really really good. I think that the um, uh, how the um, the landscape of the U.S. looks as they are traveling across is like this does look believably like a war torn United States, um, especially as they're like they're driving. Um, no, nah, that's uh, just Virginia, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're they're in New York at this point. Um, but like, there's one scene where they're, um, I mean, this is very early on, and it's it's in the start of the of the the trailer that I showed you earlier, Shiv. It's where their their car, it, their uh-huh. their SUV is um, driving down this um, freeway with a ton of just like wrecked cars, basically, right? Like there's Random some cars, sort of, yeah, yeah, like something out um, of the zombie apocalypse movie. Yeah, I I always actually really 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 like um, these sorts of visuals personally. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's just, there's a lot of uh, visual storytelling done in like one quick frame um as a matter of fact um one, one second here so atlanta snow apocalypse 2014 uh it's actually very fucking funny because there is uh there's an image of um the uh cars like basically the streets heading up into atlanta um with all these abandoned cars and honestly it, it looks just like that one um frame from the walking dead um which one so uh we had it so in in 2014 there was a an event that we had called snowmageddon i'm, I'm putting an image of it um in uh in, in mm. the chat right right there hang on um it was the sequel to shock uh so basically we had the craziest snowstorm in the state in years and the roads were Plain old, not prepared. Um, oh, I actually quite literally found the comparison to The Walking Dead right there. Um, a lot of those cars, um, well, they weren't abandoned quite like quite yet right there. Um, but in this image right here, yeah. Um, a lot of people had to basically get out of their cars and walk home um, because it was just impossible to drive in these conditions. Um, 
So, but uh, what's, the, what's the um the situation like with with this like big like uh convoy of abandoned vehicles? Basically, like is are they are they just abandoned because abandoned in general, or were they like shot up, or were they bombed, or um it so honestly, it looks like some of these uh, some of these vehicles are bombed. Like, let me see if I can try to pull up. Give me one second. In the trailer, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm 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 pulling up the frame. From the trailer right i'm just thinking of um is it jarhead i can't remember which war movie it was like early 2000s war movie set in the first gulf war where they have yeah, the famous scene on the high on the highway with the white with, you know where the, the soldiers are walking past all the vehicles that have been white phosphorus bombed yeah i was like that'd be that'd be a cool thing to pay homage to in a civil war movie and you know in a kind of like this could happen here sense yeah share your screen share image there it is and i can i can even point to like a couple of cars that i can clearly see are like uh, damage in this next frame right here. Yeah, um, th there it appears that there was just there was some type of of shootout skirmish on this uh, on this highway. Um, overall, um, and there's also like several uh, scenes in this movie with like clearly fucked up looking buildings, um, like <laughs> a lot of uh, backgrounds that kind of evoke The Last of Us even. Mm. Um, and so I was just like, yeah, I mean, I think the movie did really like, this is a, this is one of the stronger points of the movie is that there is never a point where this feels like, um, fake. I remember that, there, uh, Jolly, do you remember that one, um, rooftop in episode two of the last of us where it's like, this seems like it's an oddly good condition compared to the rest of the, uh, the rest of the environment. Uh, yeah. The, the, the stop, the stop for the scenery rooftop. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> There, there, there are no hiccups in the set design um, in this movie like that. So, um, I'm sorry, that, I'm sorry, I, I, complete tangent, but I just thought of another logistical thing, which is like, don't a bunch of these states have nuclear warheads? Does that yeah. matter into the film at all? No. no. That's strange. Wow. Oh my god, I'm about to praise Hunger Games over this movie. That's actually something Hunger Games addressed, which is like, if you have two breakaway states and each one has nuclear weapons, you're probably going to just have to like accept the fact that they've broken away. You can't really force them at that point. Yeah. So do Texas and California, I, I don't know enough about this, like, do they have nuclear weapons? I mean, I presume Texas would have nuclear weapons silos somewhere in, in there, right? And I, I and California has a bunch of naval anyway. bases. Well, and also California has a bunch of naval bases, so I'd be amazed if there weren't some ICBM submarines that are around there. All right, so um, they used to live next to a Lockheed Martin, like not next to, but like near one. The U.S. nuclear arsenal. The weapons are kept in submarines and uh, eighty foot, eighty foot deep missile silos across five of the Great Plains states. I love how people country. in my comments or in, in the chat right now are just arguing about arcane, and we're talking about civil war. <laughs> That's what I like. I think it does. Okay, so it does. It does look like Texas. It does, in fact, have nuclear weapons. Oh, sweet! Thanks for the heads up. As well, <laughs> as well as Georgia. Beg your pardon. <laughs> like, like Julie noted, oh. on my way. Okay, Wait, so that means the Florida Alliance has nuclear weapons. Then, well, honestly, it should be the, oh, the fucking. Honestly, that should be the fucking Georgia Alliance because Georgia's got the nukes. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. There's no bias yeah, there, jackass. <laughs> they don't have money, so. Imagine or, or liking Georgia or Florida. <laughs> Imagine Sorry, like the, the Disney Oklahoma. Alliance. <laughs> Disney, Disney are running the Florida. <laughs> I, I, no, I no, like Florida. No, so Jolly, I literally made that joke. I'm like, my head canon is that it's because <laughs> Disney owns Orlando and therefore they own Florida. So they're they call themselves the Florida Alliance. They're bankrolled by the Disney. Company. Although these days they're kind of hated by uh, Florida government because of a certain certain guy, a certain dude, a certain lad. <laughs> yeah, but they're also getting chum. <laughs> the Florida government are also getting their asses handed them illegally on that front. So that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Florida man. Um, okay, so I'm sorry. All right, uh, we're 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 getting off topic here. So they they have to go to a gas station. Um, they stop by a uh, what appears to be a Valero. Um, and one thing are... I did find interesting about the world building, uh, mm -hmm. some something I think they did well is like, oh yeah, there are just going to be a lot of areas that like are basically inoperable as like in terms of society. Like you, you're just. When you see a gas station, you gotta risk it. You 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 have no idea when when, when is the next time you're gonna find one that's open and willing to exactly. give you gas. So you just have to try, even if you're not sure. They literally have to give three hundred Canadian dollars away for a half tank of fuel. Mm -hmm. Ooh, half, yeah, there's, there's, there's fuel. this entire exchange yeah. about like how currency, like like what currency is worth at this point. Yeah. Oh, sweet. 
I like that. Good, yeah. good for the movie. But I'm actually doing that. Yeah. So that, that's the thing is like you have a lot of really good bits of world building, and then you're like, but I don't know what any of these factions well, are and why they're fighting it, this war. Honestly, it, it's also cool because when so they stop by this gas station, and there are three dudes with like AR-15s uh, that are just like guarding the gas station, basically, and they're <laughs> they literally have a conversation of like, do we do we really want to risk it? Um, and and they they choose to. And so then um, they they pull over um, and they they you know get out of the car and one of the guys walks up and asks if they have a fuel pass like I guess that there is a there is some type of is what yeah like said. yeah like 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 a fuel permit or something like there is a, there very much apparently is a type of like uh, you know how like the um, the Last of Us uh, shows like there's a currency of like ration cards right there's mm -hmm. something like that for like uh, fuel depending on where you live or something. I think it's actually kind of neat and that makes sense. Um, so they decided to, you know, they, they, they basically barter 300 Canadian dollars for uh, a half tank of fuel plus um, like a, a couple of like jerry cans as well. Like to, to hmm. you can kind of see in. Um, oh, that's another thing I was thinking of though, in terms of like why I think it's necessary to understand the motivations behind this war and like the factions they're in is that like when they're driving through, these different territories and encountering all these different people that represent, you know, different loyalties. You mm -hmm. never know what, like whether or not, like what the stakes are essentially. You never know like what, like what will get them killed if they say the wrong thing. Like if they, if they say something that implies they're loyal to this ideology that the people that have guns that they're talking to right now, aren't going to like hearing, you know, stuff like that. Right. So they find themselves antagonized by like different people across the movie, but you never know like what, is the wrong or right thing to say. You just kind of have to hope that they don't say anything that will piss off the guys with guns and exactly. get them all apparently uh, admitting that you're from Hong Kong, which is an immediate death <laughs> sentence. Yeah. So that's another reason why I feel like we needed a bit more information on that and why you can't just skate past that and try to be vague and ambiguous. Yeah. Um, so they, now I guess here's the, so um, remember she, when we talked about how silly it is to bring Jesse along and this is one of the reasons why is because while uh, they get out, so so Joel gets out of the car to get fuel. Um, like Joel and Lee jump, like step out of the car specifically for the fuel. Jesse decides that she is going to wander off because yeah. she, she said that she she saw something. Yeah, they let um, and they let her do that, I guess, because she's a grown woman. I don't know; she can just do whatever. Um, Eve, they they have they've got places to be. They do, yeah. That's the thing. Is like this isn't she? They, they, one of them literally even says this isn't going to take long. She's like, yeah, I'll be back. Then one of the guys with the guns follows her and escorts her to what she was going to look at. Fucking um, hell, I, dude! I got such bad vibes from the dude that was following her. I was like, oh yeah, my god. Yeah, I thought they were going a different way with that, but that's not what in, what ended up happening at all. Thank God. But at the same time, <laughs> I was like, the, the guy looks like a <laughs> he looks like a college frat bro. I, I'm just gonna say that he he. He looks like the kind of guy that would uh, that would basically take advantage of her. Um, thankfully, he doesn't. Um, but like, yeah. So what the fuck would they have done if he thing. tried to do? Yeah. What but, a horrible thing to say, Southpaw. For all you know, this man was a saint. Like, yeah, he, could, he could have had orphans he'd adopted. He could have. So had anyway, he escorts her to the kittens. prisoners. He escorts her to the prisoners that they have hanging up in the in the shed. Yeah, there's like a shed um, behind the gas station. Mercilessly. Yeah, there's like two guys uh, that have been uh, tortured slash beaten up, and they're. Um, I, I honestly love that, that they were like hanging from their necks. They, they aren't. They're still alive, um, barely. Yeah, that's, that's what the first shot made me think was happening because we only see like their legs essentially just swinging back and forth, and you're like, oh, that he's showing them the people that they lynched. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, no, uh, they're 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 just like their their hands are tied up and they're hanging uh, up in the air. They are apparently looters, I guess. Um, yeah. And so, and I mean, I guess this is the thing. That in, in a setting like this, it does make sense that, um, like, uh, there Basically, would be looters. People are just taking the law into their own hands as well, and just yeah, torturing people for trying to steal from them. Yeah. It it. I mean, this is the th this is this happens in war touring countries all the time. So it's it's one of those things. Where like, yeah, this this sort of thing does make sense to see in in America with this uh, type of setting. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and Jesse, who is not very experienced, is obviously very disturbed by this and is like shaking. And uh, honestly, this is a really cool characterization. Um, or, or uh, I'd say 
juxtaposition. Lee follows um, the it, Jesse and in the the one guy with gun. Um, the one guy with gun. Yeah, the, the one guy, <laughs> that one guy with gun. Um, and it's like, I mean, obviously she wants to keep an eye on Jesse, and then uh, she like sort of just walks up, and she's like way more chill than cool, Jesse is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's a lot more experienced. She's got like 20 years of experience. Um, mm -hmm. And so the absolute contrast between uh, Jesse and Lee is shown very clearly here. And like, it's, it, it was already kind of shown in the first scene when um, they were at the protests. Um, but then it's, it's made even more clear right here. And the mm -hmm. next, I think the very next thing that, that, that they cut to is like, they're driving away now. And Lee makes it very clear to Jesse is like, that that is nothing compared to what you're going to be seeing as we're like driving. Yeah, and of course, Lee, Jesse's in the back seat, just like freaking out and crying. She's like, "I didn't even take any pictures. I didn't even think to take any pictures." Yeah, um, and I think I think all that's pretty neat. You know, it's like we're we're showing the contrast between these two characters, um, and I think and you know setting up this thing that the movie kind of tries <laughs> to carry out for the rest of the movie that um, <laughs> she you know she reminds Lee a lot of what she was like when Brother. she was her age, when she was just starting out. And you almost get the sense that Lee, like one of the reasons Lee is kind of discouraging for her from continuing down this path is she's like, I don't want you to end up like me. Yeah. But Berserker Goji says that man, I, I guess referring to the looters, could have been a, a, a doctor that saves zebras in his spare time. <laughs> and and, and man, Jack with, man with gun. He saved zebras. <laughs> he <laughs> saved zebras. Jack Cooper saying, uh, pretty cool that they fit some uh, some cool character moments into this movie, despite its treading on glass vibe. And yeah, like honestly, the strongest, so the strongest parts of the movie have to do with, it might like, so direction is solid. Acting mm -hmm. is solid. Um, and Good cinematography in a lot of places, I thought. Well, yeah, then, well, I, I count that as part of the direction. And then you have the production design as well. Um, it's, it's just like, there's strong parts of the movie it's just that, like, overall, it just, is it, it just is doesn't it, commit to uh, what I think it's trying to say or what it's trying to do. Yeah. Well, this is the kind of thing with Alex Garland more widely, right? Of like, I, I'm starting to think X Machina was kind of an accidental lightning in a bottle because every that was single him? Garland movie. Yeah, that mm. was him. Oh my God. Every those single movies, movie. Those movies were made by the same person. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, every, every movie I've seen from him since has been like really, really bad. And like, in, you know, I, the directing is always great. It always looks fantastic. It's always like incredibly like well made, and the performances are always good. But the stories are always like total nonsense. Um, like you've got Annihilation, you've got him, and now apparently Civil War. And the only one that stands out is Ex Machina, which is truly fantastic. And I'm not quite sure yeah. how he did that now. Really good. Yeah. Have, have you seen Men Jolly? I have seen well, I've seen half of men. I gave up on it. <laughs> He's half man. Half man. <laughs> um right, yeah. So uh um I'm You saw to... half of men and it's prequel to and a <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the okay. third one of the in the series, which was children of <laughs> right. Um Okay. Oh, by the way, I should mention um when when they decide to allow uh Jesse to tag along. Um, so, so here's the thing is, is Lee is not happy with this idea, is not happy to see Jesse is sitting in, in, in the car. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, I'm sorry, we're, we're going back in time before this gas station scene. Okay. So when it's first made clear that Joel wants to bring Jesse along, she's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Because she obviously doesn't want uh, Jesse to be, to be brought along. And Joel's like, oh, but she's cool. Like he's just met her and everything. And, and again, just like, you guys do not know each other. Like Joel has no personal connection with Jesse at all. Like literally he's just met her and thinks, yeah, I will bring her along for this very super duper, well, you know, duper dangerous mission. There's something, something wider to be said about these characters, just trusting strangers that they've never met before that they have no reason in, to trust <laughs> in this motherfucking setting too. Uh huh. Like it, 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 it I mean, it's, it's not quite as bad as uh, <laughs> y'all act like you've heard of us or something, but I mean, it's, it's yeah. Um, and, and, and so then Lee, uh, by the way, decides to compromise and say, we are dropping her ass off at like at Charlottesville, no matter what. Hmm. Um, which, uh, well, we can get into that later, I guess, wh whether they, they, it, they follow through, whether Lee follows through on uh, that, that decision. Um, what was the so was the very next thing the uh, the college campus shootout, uh, Sheev? Yeah, I think so. 
it looks like a college campus, so I'm I'm calling it one. Um, I wasn't sure what it was. I just no. you know a bunch of buildings. No, that they're you know at. What? We skipped the scene. They're Did they're we? at they're at like a. It's like they're at a train yard or something. They're or they're by like right. Well, yeah. The night, night before the night before they go to the college campus shootout. Um, yeah, just kind of chilling and camping. Um, and there's not really a whole lot going on there except like there's some characterization between Lee and Sammy, and then we there's there's some between Joel and and Jesse as well. Um, which I I actually quite like that scene. I thought it was. I, neat. I do too. I liked it because yeah, um, he he literally says to Jesse something like to the effect of. You know, if you uh, what what's he say? Is, is someone's gonna he be, says, "Don't expect to sleep because you're probably not going to." But if you if you if you expect not to sleep, then if it does happen, it's a pleasant surprise. Yeah, well, um, I thought, that and then says like, that, and then she asks, "Oh, okay, are you going to sleep?" And he says, "Yes, I, I I'm probably going to fall asleep, but like, uh, you know, or I could stay up with you and keep you company." And she says, "You know, I don't want to be a burden." He said, "You know," he's like, "Okay," uh, he says, "But like, seriously, if you're ever scared." Uh, or like freaking out or anything just don't bot- like don't hesitate to wake me up because um it's not great to be scared by yourself and that makes me really 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 like joel yep. um that, that he was that probably was... my favorite character in this movie <laughs> yeah that 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 is honestly like again the character stuff in this movie is fairly strong for like world building stuff isn't great um the waste of the premise of an american civil war uh, in the 21st century is annoying but like what they what they're doing for the characters is not bad. So, um, yeah, a very solid scene, uh, well acted, well directed. Um, there's a point where uh, Joel seems like he wants to like, like uh, Lee and Sammy are just chilling on like a like some sofa that's just out in the open um, by this by this railroad track, and there is a lot of gunfire happening very close by. You see a lot of gunfire and explosions. Uh, you hear a lot of gunfire going off very close by there is uh, all kinds of like artillery shit like going into the air and you can see the stuff it sounds like joel actually uh correct me if i'm wrong he wanted to actually go to uh like like shoot yeah, like right want to go check it out and she's like we, you know we're not do- we're not going there at night yeah exactly obviously. but we can check it out, out. <laughs> we can we can check it out in the morning if if they're still at it or something is like cool and then the very so, so after he has a scene with with Jesse, uh, we then um, we cut to so all of a sudden there is a shootout happening on a college campus. Um, we like there, we have absolutely it, it just drops us in there. Um, mm-hmm. It's a bit jarring, I will say. Um, I don't know if it's it's I wouldn't I wouldn't know if it's if it's a problem that there is just no I'll yeah. So. Um, but yeah, it, like it, it, it's a pretty hard cut, basically, and we do get um, a good sense of uh, what you were talking about earlier. With um, they like they show the one of the journalists uh, taking a photo, and then it no idea why students would stay on campus. Uh, there are no students on campus. This is very clearly an abandoned uh, uh, building if, that, if, that, that two different factions are using to as, if, a, as a staging ground. If this is a university campus, which is what it very much looks like, this is not one that is um, currently being used. You just see like one group of kids with textbooks and backpacks just walking by, just just chatting, <laughs> going about their day. The, well, there, you see, this is set in the Remyverse where crazy things happen on school rounds uh, every single day and no one yeah, really cares. True. So, um, yeah, so there's um, basically there's there's a guy... So I assume that this is the Florida Alliance um, fighting the Loyalists. Um, yeah. Why do you uh, assume that? Because I have no way of knowing which faction is which. So like I said, um, the Western forces actually look like a uh, rather... So it's kind of like the, like the, um, the Western forces uh, are somewhat like the Rebel Alliance in the, um, in the original trilogy, whereas the Florida Alliance looks uh, closer to the Rebel Alliance in Andor, right? Where they're a lot okay. scrappier and um, or like less less, less organized uniform, or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the Florida Alliance look like proper like they, they they have proper uniforms with actually a distinctive American flag patch, whereas the um, the soldiers that are fighting on the uh, university campus are not. I so I'm just I'm assuming this is the Florida Alliance here, um, and. Uh, when it comes to shootout sequences in this movie, I'd say that they're pretty solid. Um, at uh, 
conveying well, there, were, there were no church bells ringing in the middle of a gunfight but no <laughs> they were fine for me I, I yeah went. yeah um i think it, it just it does a very good job of uh, honestly i actually felt like the characters were uh, consistently in in genuine danger um so um but basically there's like it honestly there's not a whole lot of like plot being developed in this or or even characters really or world yeah um if anything it's just simply there to show um jesse is getting some experience on the field um yeah. she takes a very a a very good looking photo of a florida alliance soldier who is getting um treated for a gunshot wound um uh that uh, lee later comments on when they're at some refugee camp later in the film Hmm. Um, after this battle plays out and the, uh, the Florida Alliance basically, well, actually, so here's the thing is we, we then move on to the, the first, I think rather inappropriate needle drop in the movie. Um, cause the Florida Alliance basically, uh, wins the skirmish, um, and they capture uh, a few loyalist soldiers, put bags over their heads and, um, do a summary execution of them. Um, and as they are doing this, there is some, uh really upbeat uh song playing over this um yeah it was, it was awkward weird. <laughs> it was really awkward really tonally out of place yeah again it's just like if if you're going for comedy here then i guess this works but they weren't this is honest to god one of the least funny movies i've ever seen so I, like i don't think they were going for comedy that's why like i don't know what they what they were going for i don't know why they chose to put this in the movie yeah jack cooper asks an interesting question um could the obfus uh, could the obfuscated factions and battles be a right decision meant to show how the breakdown of comms infrastructure affects individuals ability to discern what's happening uh i'm not entirely sure about that well, that's just, that's just kind of what's down to like you know in a war you, everyone's bad kind of thing. Which mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, sure. I, I, I imagine that's what Garland would probably say if you asked him. That is but... the main message of this movie: war bad. Yeah, but then I'd refer back to what Sheev and I said earlier, which is I that's kind of a cowardly decision, maybe. Yeah, yeah. no, it's Jay... a very cowardly decision. I'm I'm being satirical here. <laughs> Jay says I think the goal is to make it awkward, at least from the perspective of someone listening, and so um, the. I guess, okay, I think that the best faith interpretation of these weird needle drops is, uh, I, I guess it would be coming from the perspective of, um, uh, it would be coming from the perspective of, of like the, the, the main characters themselves who are trying to be more objective and are a little bit more desensitized to this sort of thing, I guess. Yeah, so that's that's what I was going to say is like, you could you could argue that the reason for them existing in the setting that they do is because you're trying to convey that despite the horrors that they're bearing witness to constantly they're just kind of trying to you know basically do the the raindrops falling on my head sequence from spider-man 2 <laughs> yeah just um, be like yeah, you know just eat the hot dog while the fucking you know attack is happening just don't give a fuck yeah just look the um, other way when that guy's getting mugged that sort of thing um so then what's the very next thing that happens after this moment? Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble, like trying to put the events of the film in order. Right. Um, Cause there were a lot of different, basically disconnected sequences all meant to just basically convey. This is a war torn country and we're yeah. visiting various locales in There's said war torn country. There's a lot of like like yeah vignettes basically like like we 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 see like three or four different like vignettes that are relatively or or like five vignettes that are basically like disconnected. Yeah. Um. So the next sequence when they go to the uh that one area playing the Christmas music and there was like the the estate the guy the guy shooting. It was either it, so it's either that one or it is the football stadium refugee camp. I'm not uh, entirely sure. Well, I guess we could just talk about the uh, football stadium then if you want. Uh, sure, I guess. Um, there's not a whole lot that I can recall happening. Um, they go to a football stadium um, with... Uh, and, and I I guess that it's... it's um, who is it that, that, that's running? Like like the Global Relief Fund or something? Is that is that the um, the organization that's basically like... This is... It's, it's basically like a refugee camp. 
um, yeah. for, for for people. Um, uh, not a whole lot happens in it, I, as I recall. Like I remember, like they 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 get there and uh, Joel immediately starts playing jump rope with a couple of girls. Uh, and you get that very, one moment on the bleachers with uh, Lee and Jesse. That was the uh, next thing I was going to mention. Yeah, um, Lee is like Lee's got some food and is going uh, over to Jesse on the bleachers, and Jesse is currently developing some some of her film. Um, and God, like I guess that she was trying to understand Lee's backstory a little bit more. And this is, I think, where they mentioned the Antifa massacre. Yeah, it is. So, like, she asked her why she got into uh, like war photography, and she goes, "I mean, I thought you said I was one of your heroes, don't you know?" And then she regurgitates <laughs> basically like what she's read about her on Wiki, uh, Wikipedia. Wow. Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that tells you a lot about love, me, love. doesn't it? Yeah. Love, it really love, does. Love, 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 on Carson's covering. <laughs> so like basically she took a quote unquote legendary shot of a Antifa massacre. Yeah. Um, and that, the that Antifa massacre is what they call it. So it's like some kind of big historical event that happened, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know anything okay, about have, what this massacre entailed. Was it was it Antifa being massacred? Did I'm pretty sure it would have to, Well, be, okay, so I would have to assume that because the um the the government in this movie is very thoroughly implied to be fascistic, that Antifa would be getting the good massacred. guys, yeah, right? or like would at least be framed as the downtrodden in this. Film. Yes, sure. Uh, I, I guess what seems guess like they're taking is, a political stance. Well, I, I guess my question is right that like I mean yes they are taking political stance if that's the thing but also like Antifa isn't isn't like really I mean I know there is an organization called Antifa but like Antifa as a movement is a much wider thing than just that organization so is it just the organization's massacre or just a, a general like, I don't know Antifa marches that were okay cool yeah <laughs> I love details. there was some kind of Antifa massacre that happened. And it's she, it, she photographed it's movies it and made it famous. It's so are, are you guys? Yes. Are, are you guys familiar with the Calvin and Hobbes uh, noodle incident thing? It's like like the, 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 there's just a thing that. Do you guys ever read the, the, the newspaper comic Calvin I, and Hobbes? I I, I, I know what a noodle incident is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what you're referencing though. I, could you explain it to me? I know it. So uh, I'm the like, only one who doesn't know this. Wow. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, it it it's got a bro just doesn't page. like wholesomeness. So it literally. They, they, there's literally a, a TV trope named after this. So the noodle incident is something from the past that is referred to, but never explained with the implication that it's just too ludicrous for words or perhaps too offensive for depiction and the reality that any explanation would fall short of audience expectations. There's basically just they giving a vague implication of what happened without actually explaining it. It's just like, it, yeah, it is one of my most hated tropes in sci-fi movies because it's always uh, horribly <laughs> abused, and it sounds like it's doing it here. Like you know, like the, the whole thing where like someone's like, "Oh, you know, this thing happened before the event," and then they just look at the camera, and then like just the whole scene carries on, and you never find out what the fuck mm -hmm. they were talking about. It's That's, it's, it's 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 yeah. when you're trying not to be overly expositional in like a clunky way with your dialogue, so you don't want the characters to outright explicitly mention the event that happened in a way that you feel would be unnatural, but as a result, you then don't actually provide the necessary context for the audience to understand what the fuck is being talked about hey uh, I, I remember literally seeing a movie where like the the opening thing is like there's like 385 days since the event and then they never explain what the event was <laughs> hey, hey uh uh guys we've got one in chat philip props hello he says i'm at the beginning it's funny all the talk about disbanding the fbi and how crazy they think that is because i believe we should do it today in real life it is an oh, obviously no. politically captured entity Oh, so my kind, my kind word to you is you're delusional. Seek help. Is that? I, I'm, that's, that's, I'm that's sorry. Quite, that, that, that's well, really nice. Here. Okay, Philip. Um, I, I, you might be a very nice person. I don't know you. Um, I very strongly encourage you to get off internet forums and actually start looking into the real world. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. Because if you think the FBI is some kind of grand illuminati-esque conspiracy then you are very divorced from jolly did just you just tell this guy to touch earth. grass politely yeah i was gonna say <laughs> just tell him yeah. to touch grass bro <laughs> yeah, yeah i i know that i know that he's at the beginning um well the, the other thing is uh he'll see that yes, he'll see it eventually if he keeps well, listening he, i mean his profile picture is is a little girl like a very young little girl wearing what appears to be a maga cap is, is that a maga cap i wasn't taking a good enough look at it oh yes uh, oh yeah it is youth. that yeah <laughs> Well, all right. We are not a cult. This person we are not a cult. Gentleman. We are. Yeah, <laughs> you're not affiliated with me. <laughs> uh, 
It's fine though. We don't hate you. It's fine. Uh, I mean, was... I never said I didn't hate, but you know, carry on. No, I, say, I feel like there's a real missed opportunity in American politics for the, from the Democrats to have like a blue hat, just saying make America mid again. Um, <laughs> Andrew Yang literally did try that. Did oh. he actually? Oh, oh no! And, don't tell me that. Um, Yang is awful. He ruins everything he touches. No, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that Andrew Yang literally had like 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 made blue caps like a a a thing. Um, he's, um, yeah. So well. I guess that what I'm thinking of he is, is he would wear a cap that said math, a blue cap that said math. Make America something. Math again. Make America. Totally horny. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what it is. There doesn't seem to be a very clear acronym for it. <laughs> I want to get the, maybe get the really conservative version. It's like make America 13 states again. <laughs> <laughs> Only the original 13 colonies are allowed. That's a... Uh... <laughs> um all right so now uh, by the way i wanted to address something that jack cooper said a little bit earlier in uh in chat um am i giving the movie too much credit like i don't think it, so well for one i don't know if you've even seen the movie jack um but i also don't think it's a problem to play devil's advocate if need be um, we hate devil's advocates around here yeah Aww. um yeah, get the fuck out of here, Jolly. Well, Jolly. It, I mean, Jolly was gallows. Jolly was literally like playing a pretty good devil's advocate when we we're talking about just how silly the 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 map looks for all the factions. Yeah. So, I think it's it's perfectly fine to like provide a uh, contrarian or uh, well, I don't know about contrarian, but just like just I simply thank you, Paul. <laughs> I'm just simply saying contrarian. It, <laughs> not, not maybe that's the wrong word. Just going against the grain. I think it's fine to go against the grain. I've never been so insulted in all my life, sir. Try, try to... <laughs> hey, you agree with You're me? You're a that contrarian. B-tass... No, I'm not. You agree with me that B test <laughs> is not good. I've seen. I've seen the stream. Clip Chicken with... soup. <laughs> <laughs> I like going against the grain. Hence Zootopia, which, by the way, someone on my Discord server was trying to defend it and failing to defend it. It was quite Zoo- honestly this... Copia. <laughs> I want to see the Civil War Zootopia movie. Let's I want to see get Nick and Judy get right into like now. two different warring <laughs> sides and just like spill each other's fucking brains in a wall. I've, I've lost control of this of this stream We're talking about <laughs> Zootopia. Now. If, if listen, if if there is a if there is a civil war in Zootopia, like Alex Garland Civil War, like predators and prey would be working together in both factions. It'd be to like be so fair, fucking confusing. <laughs> to be completely fair, though, given the context no, at the end of Zootopia. There is going to be a civil war at some point. No, no, we need to stop. We need to stop the Zootopia chat before she even loses his mind. We're going down a, a rabbit Sorry. hole that not even I'll Judy Hopps would venture into. <laughs> okay. the path I follow. I'll stop. I just say right. you don't want to hear me go on about this garbage. Back to back to the bleachers. Um, because I remember that there is a uh, so after the um the Antifa massacre is briefly mentioned as being the thing that that brought Lee that that put Lee on the map. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, there's so I guess that Sammy is not Sammy. Um, Jesse, Jesse is developing um uh, the photos that mm. she took at at the um at the university. She has this um, little handheld kit, which I think is kind of neat. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't know. I've, I don't know anything about developing photos. Also, why did why does she have a film camera at all? <laughs> yeah, film um, in the year twenty fifty. Yeah. Well, I will say he has a digital camera, which is Lee, like, yeah, you'd probably want to have one of those, right? Well, I do mention uh, Lee actually does mention because there's a scene that I think we skipped over where um, they 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 pull over because there's like a shopping mall that's been um, mm-hmm. abandoned basically, and there's a uh, totally crashed helicopter in the parking lot of this um, uh, of this shopping mall, mm-hmm. and she's actually encouraging Jesse to like go take photos of it, um, and she does ha- comment on. The relatively ancient camera that Jesse is working with that Jesse says mm. belongs to her Which dad. Which belongs to her dad, who's a, who's just trying to grill. Yeah, uh, he, like like she's like he's not dead or anything. He's just in in Missouri pretending that this that this isn't happening. Um, and then Lee relates that that's exactly what her parents are doing too, but in Colorado. Yeah. So then, um, but yeah, like so 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 Jesse is using some old film camera, and um, I I I guess. I've never heard of this thing that she uses in order to basically like develop the films um, out like outdoors in like portable. It's some kind of like canister. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it really exists again. I just don't know the logistics of like how well, film yeah, is developed I, I, and that you could do that. I would outside. presume 
I would presume from like you know old old timey war journalists in in countries where like there wasn't exactly access to high tech lab equipment that you probably mm. would have some kind of portable kit to get do it. Yeah. yeah, I've 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 never seen it. I'm not saying I'm not suggesting that it's fictional. Uh, I'm just like oh I've I've never seen it. If it's I am if it's not something that I understand as reality, then it has to be fiction. Exactly. Um, yeah. If it so if it is fiction, I think it's neat. And if it's not fiction, it's like that's actually a really neat attention to detail. Um, so. Um, if you will, it is a military helicopter. That's what it appears to be, Jay. Um, yeah. uh, okay, so then, um, after the bleacher scene, it, well, basically, like, I guess the climax of this is basically like, uh, Jesse is looking through the photos that she's taken and she's like kind of miffed by how, like, a lot of the shots are just out of focus, but then they find the one shot of that, that, that she took of the guy, uh, getting treated for a gunshot wound. And leaving comments, that's a really good photo. Um, so it's just like, uh, again, Jesse's going on an arc of someone who is very much inexperienced with this kind of thing. That is really her first time um, being in, in like a combat theater and taking photos of it. And she takes a good photo. So there's that, I guess. Um, I mean, they do also mention in the scene that like, it's typical, like on average, that you're going to have more bad photos that are basically unusable because exactly. you're in a situation when you're taking these pictures that it's very high stress and very like fast moving. And a lot of the people that you're taking pictures of are going to be moving fast. So it's going to be hard to like get them in focus and then not be like just a blur. Right. You know? So like you're pr there's going to be a, a pretty vast ratio of bad photos. And then you'll find like the one nugget in the, in the midst of all of that. Yeah. Uh, and, and the, the experienced journalists are going to look through all those photos and be like, ha, noob. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and yeah like they, she she finds the good one like like the, the one good one in lee who is someone who jesse looks up to even comments on it being a, a good photo so um again like this this scene in isolation is totally fine like we're, we're working off of a premise that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense the very premise of let's go down to let's go DC. let's go interview the president who doesn't let's, want to be interviewed and will shoot us on site if he sees a journalist and then let's bring jesse along let's bring an not? experienced kid along too why not <laughs> yeah like 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 so it's one of the things where like this is a very silly broken premise but there are there's like well executed scenes that are happening as a result of that premise so it's just it's one of those things where like i i i would say like this is closer to a four than anything else but like uh the reason why it is a four and not like a two or a one is because there is good stuff that like they're um, achieving yeah. with just a very silly premise. So, um, all right. So after the, uh, the, the, well, she, did you have anything to comment on the, the football scene? No, I think we covered it. Okay. Um, oh, the next, uh, the very next scene is the, um, the small town um there's like right they just yeah. run into this like well like they drive into this town mm -hmm. that just looks completely normal like not war-torn in the slightest it's yeah. a, you know it's the it's the classic like slice I don't know, slice of life like american town you know all yes. the kids running around they're happy all the stores are you know all the buildings are like nice and not fucking you know bullet holes and shit you know like that kind yeah. of thing and you know what I can kind of do is I, I can actually uh, supply screenshots from the trailer uh, in chat. Oh, is, is this the one where they're like, you, you guys realize there's a civil war going on out there? Mm, and yes. Like, yeah, we're just kind of ignoring that, though. <laughs> yeah, they're they're in some mom and pop little department store. Mm. Um, and she's just like, yeah, we're just trying to stay out of it. Um, how? It, it, it's just, how do you stay out of this? Great question, because I have no idea. Yeah, like this like, is. Do you just pretend it, that the stores have no food anymore because you can't logistically supply these towns because there's a well, fucking battlefield ten miles away? Well, I, so this is the thing: is that they they are, they they go into this town. Well, it, well, they're passing by some suburbs that are like completely in pristine suburbs. condition. Suburbs, yeah. Sorry. Um, wow. uh, how do you say? How do you say suburbs. it? You said suburbs. You like put emphasis on the herbs. Sorry, that's just how I do. It, how I say it, but. The point is, um, so, um, and I, I, I very well maybe the, the improper way to say it, but that's just how I've always Sorry, said it. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you off. You no, it's fine. You're making a point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As, they're, as oh. they're driving through these like completely undamaged uh, suburbs, um, the, uh, Joel even's like, have we just like gone through a time warp or something? Like they, they, they feel like they've gone back through time um, because they're just caught off guard by how uh undamaged this area seems to be 
Um, and then they go to this like little uh, small small business that's like got clothes in it. Um, there's not really anything that's going on here, to be honest with you. Um, like Lee puts on like a dress. You, you and... do have that one little moment where like Lee and uh, Sammy go back and forth about how Lee is thinking like I almost forgot what a world that isn't just con- like what a version of America looked like that wasn't this right. horrible hellscape. And then he was like, oh, that's funny because like, as I'm an older gentleman and that's my only character trait, um, I, this is basically like what I'm used to and everything that we've been going through recently is like so alien to me. So like, you know, you have these differing perspectives where she's just like, I'm, I'm so used to war. And he's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm used to peace. So right. They, they have these different perspectives on this, this nice little town. That's just kind of away from all of it. Yeah. Um, so then I'm trying to think of like what, what's, uh, oh, um, I think that like, uh, Joel goes, uh, like either Joel or Lee. Um, well, so first off Lee puts on like a dress and Jesse takes like a couple of photos of, of her. They're like, they're goofing off they're you know, they're bonding and everything. And then Joel walks up and he's got like a, like this, he's got like a hat. hat. (laughs) Yeah. He's, and he, he like, he clearly wants Jesse to take his picture. And then Jesse's like, actually I'm, I'm kind of running out of film and he's like clearly like dejected and annoyed. Like, Oh, um, (laughs) it's that I I thought that was a pretty funny moment. Um, cute little moment. Yeah. So then after they, uh, they walk out of the shop, I think it's Lee walks out of the shop. She, she hasn't bought the dress or anything and Sammy's out there. And he actually even um, he even mentions uh, like you know don't draw any attention to this but like you know just look up and there's a couple of guys on a roof that have rifles or like this isn't a war torn small town at all but I guess they have you know there's guys that are up on roofs that are keeping an eye and making sure that you know um, I, I I would assume that these are loyalists um, I I just again like I have no idea how you have uh towns like in this part of the country Mm -hmm. um like able to just stay out of the conflict it's it's very weird to me yeah what or even just like carry on as normal right like you know being a a fairly out of the way town is one thing in a war zone but like yeah like you have supply chain will affect you you have jesse's parents in missouri and um lee's parents in colorado who are able to just basically sit out the war and act like it's not happening but like we're in like the in the thick of it here that's like the entire point of all of this is that like, we're like, there is no safe place to be right now in, yeah. in the part of the country they're in. I'm also yeah. just amazed that they haven't been like evacuated by, by the loyalist state or, or conscripted. Like if you'd think that if the, if the fascist government in Washington is on the verge of falling, they'd just be throwing civilians into the meat grinder to try and stop yeah. it. Yep. And, you'd think. Yeah. And so then uh, after this this small town scene, um, there is a point where they are driving. They're driving their SUV and um, they come across a winter wonderland in at the very beginning of July. Um, this place has been abandoned for quite a while. Um, there's Do we know when this movie is set? Because I don't remember them saying. Oh, wait, so, yeah. They're, the, they're waiting, of July. the deadline is 4th of July. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Shit. But, there, but, there's like, <laughs> but there's like this winter wonderland, like a uh, little. Uh, um, I guess I mean, it would have been like a carnival or, or like a festival or something. So, something like that. Yeah. Um, and it's clearly been abandoned for a few months now. Um, there is Christmas music playing um, over the sequence. Um, but, but like, so there is a dead soldier on the ground. Um, and his body looks fresh. So obviously they see that and they stop the, the SUV and they're nervous as hell. Um, they decide to move forward a little bit anyways. And then there is a, honestly, a pretty good jump scare where, um, uh, a couple of, uh, like, it almost seems like Joel gets shot. Joel is, is driving and, um, like yeah, this, ju- a- this jump scare got me. I was like, yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a, a bullet or two that hits the windshield, and the way that the camera is angled is it does look like the bullet, uh, like 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 Joel gets shot basically, right? Like the the I believe mm. the bullet hole that that pops up on the windshield is like directly over Joel. Uh, it misses him, um, but then he races like like he drives the car, um, the the SUV, and parks it behind what looks like some sort of armored vehicle. Um, um, mm. You know, pretty smart. They get out and um, there is 
Um, I'm going to take it, uh, take the picture from the trailer right now. I really wish I actually should have been doing this, um, throughout the, uh, our, our coverage here, just so that people have an idea of what's going on here. Um, but you have a picture of, of the house, I have a picture of the sniper. Um, not, not, so here's the thing is that there's a, there's a sniper that's taking shots at, uh, at our, at our characters, but then they park their car behind some armored vehicle and they get out and there is uh, a, a sniper and you can't see him in this um, in this particular frame, but uh, right directly on top of this sniper here is a spotter. Um, these two guys are trying to deal with this guy who is currently shooting at our, at our main characters. So um, honestly, it, it reminds me a bit of the, the two different um, sniper levels in, in both Last of Us games, um, just, just a little bit. And I got to be honest with you here is like, again, outside of like just providing just one little vignette for Jesse to continue gaining experience with like shooting uh, urban warfare. There's not a whole lot that that like that happens here um, that like yeah. progresses the story or anything. Um, the thing is like these, there's just a lot of disconnected moments that have just nothing to do with each other and don't really build toward the larger story beyond, Hey, you can snap a picture of this and that I guess will help Jesse get yeah. better as a photographer. That, that basically, it, it's not like that. That's, 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 uh, that's not for nothing. I mean, the fact yeah. that if you, if you, if you have a story where you have a character who is supposed to be an inexperienced photographer who becomes more experienced as, as the story progresses, it does make sense to at least put them in areas where, you know, they get more experience. And to be frank here, it's just like, it's kind of hard to uh, connect all of these different experience, like like vignettes through like, like 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 connect them all through a through line, right? So, um, however, it does it does make the movie, I think, a bit of a drag to sit through in a lot of at a lot of points. Yeah, it does hurt the pacing a lot. Um, that's actually like one of my main problems with this movie. Um, well, it's, it sounds like it's very much like in the vein of an and an, and then rather than a because of movie, right? Oh, so it's yeah. like this yes. thing happens, and then this thing happens, and then this thing happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Story um, of my life. Uh, but this, the, the one thing I, I will say is funny is like, uh, so Joel gets into cover and uh, he like he's flashing his press badge that like he's wearing around his neck to the the spotter. And I was like, hey, we're, we're press, and the spotter's like. Oh, so like, oh but now I know why that was written. Like the word press is written on your vehicle. Thank you. <laughs> it's really funny. And mm -hmm. then, th then it, like, like there's a back and forth between them and it culminates in the sniper um, on screen here uh, or, or on screen Not on there screen anymore. Yeah. yeah. He, he was on screen, but the, the actual sniper that the spotter is, uh, is basically spooning um is there like guys shut the fuck up like he's trying to focus on getting this <laughs> getting this one sniper um and then he takes a shot and he says guys we got well, i've got good news and then we just move on to the next point and they are back in the car mm -hmm. um which then brings us like the snipers um i do like the snipers i have a fingernail varnish just, just yeah. Nice. yeah yeah he's, he's got and uh, like green hair yeah and the spotter has uh, bisexual hair. Actually, has has the 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 blue and and purplish uh, Sweet. hair dye. Yeah. Lines. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but now we're gonna get to my favorite part of the movie. This is where I think it yes. really, really yes. gets, goes oh. off the rails. Yeah, this is so. so ap okay, so first we have to talk about. So here's the thing we. We've seen the trailer for this movie. Um, well, I, I just showed she the trailer for this movie, and uh, I, I think the, the the part that stands out the most is Jesse Plemons. Let me let me get the um, the exact. Uh, yeah, get yes. a get a get a screenshot. Yes, so that I can yes. Do it on here, here he is. It's it, it's it's Meth Damon. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he uh, he he is a. This looks like a guy who is just a uh, an, an American soldier. And he is wearing these red sunglasses. Mm. Bro cyclops. I, bro cyclops. Yeah, <laughs> well, he's got he's cyclops glasses. And uh, let me. What was it they, they said? They, they said in the trailer. So, so like, so Joel says we're Americans, and then uh, Jesse Plemons is like, right. Well, well hang on. Kind of Americans before are before you? we actually get to this scene, let's talk about what actually led up to this well, scene. No, uh, here's the thing: is I I I, I was setting this up so. You see, there's a point where they're driving the SUV. Uh, I believe it's Lee who's driving currently. 
and she sees that there is a an SUV that is behind them that is quickly gaining pace. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking that Jesse Plemons and his friends were in that SUV. Um, it is not. And so, and here's the other thing, right? Is there's a shot from the trailer where uh, this also, give me one sec uh, to try to get this exact shot here. Hang on. Come come on over here. Uh, we, not we yet. Don't, we don't need that shot. Just just explain what happens. Right. Yeah. So um, the car that's 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 right behind um, our main characters does eventually like uh, get to their side, and you are like like the characters themselves are even wondering, are like are they hostile or something? Um, the car is now on their side and honks the horn. Um, and it is Tony and what's his name? Bohai. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Tony and Bohai who are Hong Konger reporters who actually know Lee and Joel very well. Um, so, uh, and they're just like kind of cracking up and there's a, there's a point from the trailer. So this shot from the trailer, um, when I saw this, I thought that this is Joel and he, he's like having to climb from one car to another um to safety or something uh and this is what uh, i was really caught off guard by the actual context for this shot here um no this is tony um and he is just goofing off with his friends and he is climbing from one car from from, from a car being driven by his friend bohai into the car where our four main characters are just for shits and giggles just just because yeah like just because yeah, like yeah. they they could easily just pull over, but no, he wants to instead uh, do a, a a Harrison Ford in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull style uh, climb out of one <laughs> like, 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 like climb from one car into another type stunt. I'm just like, yeah. what? Why? <laughs> Why are you doing this? So, uh, really, yeah, it's just it's you're you're, just, you're sitting there in the theater and you're like, I guess this is happening right now. What? Well, you know, YOLO, I guess. Yeah, yeah no, this is the movie Ryan Johnson prays, so that makes sense. Yeah, no, literally, this shot is sandwiched in between a shot of uh, of Joel screaming after uh, Sammy dies and a shot <laughs> of uh, of Jesse screaming. It, actually, it, it's it's the it's it is literally the thumbnail image of this of this video. And it's Jesse screaming uh, at something else that happens, but like, yeah. Um, in the trailer, this absolutely makes you think that this that's some intense scene. Nope, this is comedic relief. And yeah, I was, really, huh? I was just so confused too. Um, but then, and so here's the thing: is that what's after, even funnier is what happens next. Yeah. So <laughs> I was gonna get here. So so Tony so Tony climbs out of one car into another for shits and giggles. And Jesse thinks, you know, Jesse, this 23 year old girl that looks like she's 16, um, is so impressed by this that she wants to do this herself. And so she then decides, even though she doesn't know these fucking people, see, at least Tony knows these these characters. She doesn't know yeah, these fucking people. Jesse doesn't know Tony or Bohai. She's never met these people. She's just going to climb into the back seat <laughs> of a car being driven by someone she's never met and has no reason to trust and has, you know, in this very hostile uh, oh. environment that they're in. And I should mention by the way that like prior to uh the driver of like <laughs> the, the the people in this car being identified, like again, they had good reason to believe that this was like that this car was like trying to run them off the road or something or was like these were bandits or something. Based on like because they were going really fast and looking to overtake them. Yeah, like Lee even comes like he just burned rubber around that turn. Like mm. so, so it's just like right. Um Jesse just decides to like do this really stupid, dangerous stunt to climb into this car for no reason. Then and then he takes up which and also no like Lee reason. <laughs> Okay. Also, <laughs> Lee obviously doesn't want her to do it, but it's like before she even makes a move to climb out of the window, you could just stop the car. Yeah, and then that'll stop her from doing it, but she doesn't. She just keeps driving. Yeah. Um. And 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 by the way, of course. So, so Bohai, the driver of uh the green or gray car here, um, again, appears to be a reckless driver, and she just decides to uh climb into his car. Yeah. And and, and, and guess what Bohai does? So, uh, do you think that Bohai, now that he is uh like his friend Tony is in this car, 
and he has uh, one of these people's colleagues with him. Um, what's the, Sheev, what is the um, the responsible thing to do in this uh, crazy, dangerous, hostile environment when you've got what's basically now a two car convoy? I mean, friends. you would you'd pull over and like and like you know return each passenger to where they belong and like you know if you're gonna keep traveling together then fine like but you know do it in a way that where everyone is safe and where they're supposed to be. So, C and Jolly, would you like to know what happens next instead? Do uh, I? It's <laughs> a serious. Bo Bohai uh, with Jesse in tow and his friend Tony in this other car decides to speed way up ahead of our four main characters to a point where it takes them a while to like there is a point where they get picked up by Jesse Plemons and his friends and it takes uh, our four main characters a while to find their now abandoned car. Yeah, that's like uh, driving insanely fast ahead of them. Sometimes I just wonder, is it worth it anymore? And all of this is just happening to facilitate the Jesse Plemons scene. And you're just sitting there like, why are any of these characters making the decisions they're making? Yeah. Why is any of this happening? Oh, it's because we want to have Jesse and Bohai get captured by these. I guess they're the uh, the loyalists. I um, assume that these are loyalists. Some kind of militia force, yeah. Yeah. Who um, have taken, who've taken them prisoner and have led them to the mass grave that they were uh, digging and dumping a bunch of bodies into. They're, th okay, so uh, these are either loyalists or they are like rogue soldiers or something. I don't fucking know. I, no I, I don't I, I don't know what faction these guys belong to or if they belong to a faction. It is never made clear. Yeah. Um, well, it's ambiguous, and that's art. But yeah, this, this entire... Uh, nutball sequence is there just to facilitate this sequence where um Jesse now we have is to rescue now, Jesse because she's Jesse is, be, being held at gunpoint next to a mass grave um now i will say so she given this experience would you say that like this would be a very valuable lesson for Jesse to not do anything crazy irresponsible <laughs> in this uh in this setting going forward I would say so. I'd say that once she's safe and sound, she'll have learned her lesson and never do anything like this ever again. All right. Let's just keep that in mind. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. So, so yeah. Um, uh, Lee and Jesse and Tony and Sammy find Bohai's car abandoned. And I'm not entirely sure. I guess that they just simply drive further down the road. I'm not entirely sure how they, how exactly they, they locate. Well, they did get ran off the road at one point uh, by some kind of armored vehicle, right? And then they just got back on the road. So that didn't end up even amounting to anything. Yes, because the because the armored vehicle was going the opposite direction. So mm -hmm. it like, yeah. Um, so I don't know but, if that armored vehicle was with Jesse Plemons or if they're just a separate thing. I don't know. Right. So how much longer do you think uh, we're we're pretty close to the end i'm yeah i'm trying to get this wrapped up here in a bit yeah i didn't yeah. want this to go much longer than like two and a half hours yeah, yeah. sorry um okay so uh um yeah i through means that are unknown that i i, I simply don't remember they find um uh, jesse plemons gang um trying to dump uh, well here's the, there's a, there's like a mass grave with civilians that jesse plemons gang are responsible for killing mm -hmm. and, uh bohai and jesse have not been executed yet i'm not entirely sure why um yeah i'm not sure what they're waiting it's, on there it's jurgen Voller logic you know you, you gotta you gotta capture the good guys and not not kill them it, Exactly. I'm just like, you're bringing them to a mass grave with civilians. And, and, and the main character, the characters even comment on this, right? Is Lee takes a photo of this, uh, or, or at least uses her camera to, like, as a sort of like a telescope, basically. And uh, they're thinking, well, we have to save Jesse. Uh, we're going to have to, like, approach them, basically. But, like, I think that Sammy even comments, like, these guys do not want to be, like, seen doing what they're doing. This is a terrible idea, but, like, yeah. Well, they got they got to try to save Jesse. Or, it's like yeah. So, and here's the thing: is that this is happening beca because they decided to bring Jesse along for their suicide mission to DC, mm -hmm. um, and they're going to go ahead and 
Uh, and well, and not to mention is like they also got Tony with them, and Bohai is Tony's friend, so they, they gotta try to save him too. They get there. Um uh Sheev, do you want to take take over for the Jesse Plevin scene? Because I'm I'm running out of steam here. <laughs> uh yeah. Well, I mean, what's there to even say? Like, so they approach Jesse Plemons. Um, I'm even gonna go ahead and try to pull his image back up on screen here. Uh they approach Jesse Plemons. And they try to, you know, explain, you know, we're press and, you know, they're colleagues of ours and we just like you to give them back to us and send us on our merry way. Um, which then, you know, he, he like he's, uh, what's his name? Joel specifies several times we're Americans and he's like, oh, you keep saying that. Jesse Plemons is just generally being a dick for no real reason. I'm not he, sure what his deal is, but like whatever, he, he's an asshole. He literally shoots Bohai just for like speaking up basically. Yep. I don't know. Well, you know, he's like, oh, these are your colleagues. Is this guy your colleague? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, okay, cool. Shoots him. Um, that's for, that's how that happened. For, for um, no given reason. <laughs> so then he asked them, okay, yeah, you're Americans. What kind of Americans? Which to me implied that he had a specific idea in mind of like what kind of American you have to be to pass mm. his smell test. Mm. And that if you don't meet that requirement, he's going to kill you. But all of them answer like where they're from. He's Joel is from Florida. Mm. uh jesse's from missouri and uh and lee's from colorado and all of those seem to uh seem to be a-okay by him because he doesn't kill them and then there's of course uh the guy who's from tony's from hong kong and he gets immediately shot which is a thing that happens right so uh well all the states that, that, that they listed are those loyalist states uh no, Florida, florida's in the florida alliance florida's in the florida alliance yeah right okay but then um, Colorado. Colorado and Missouri, uh, Colorado, I think, is in loyalist territory. Missouri probably is as well, right? Okay. Maybe. Yeah, I'd have to look at the map again. Okay, so yeah, uh, well, all right. Fact of the matter is, yeah, one Flor- Florida guy should be dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he's not. Yeah. So uh, here's the thing: is like that is absolutely what the trailer teased. It was it was the idea of uh, like we don't know if this guy is loyalist or or Western forces or whatever. This is like one of those things, like. Uh oh! If they ant- if they give the wrong answer, they will die yeah. here. And what this, what, what- is, this is why I specified that earlier. It's like it's important to know who these factions are mm-hmm. and why they're fighting this war. Because mm-hmm. now I I need to understand what je- like what answer is the wrong answer to give Jesse Plemons that will cause him to kill us. And then like, it turns if I tell out- him I'm, I'm I'm from the wrong state, <laughs> will he just shoot me on sight? But so honestly, it's South American. But honestly, it's just implied that like as long as you're an American, you're fine because the only person that he then shoots after answering the question wrong is the guy who's just from Hong Kong. Like, Which also, is- like, this guy is clearly at, like, looking for, uh, like, he's clearly very nationalist. Like, he's mm-hmm. asking you what type of American you are. Why mm-hmm. not just lie and say, I don't know, I'm, I'm from Cleveland. Right. You know, you don't have to tell him you're from Hong Kong. Why... Uh- I'll, I'll do you one better, Chief. Why not say I'm also from Colorado? Because yeah. you're, you're clearly that, from that, that state. Clearly, uh, passed the smell test. It's like, hey, I mean, because the reality is, right? Is like we're friends, so not like it's a pretty reasonable assumption yeah. that like we like, know each other our whole are, lives. Well, yeah, and like none of them are going to be like, no, you're not from Colorado. You're from Hong Kong, dumbass. And then I like that none of them is going to give really, them up like that. Just like a really <laughs> obscure U.S. territory. Like I'm from Guam. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm Damn. from per- I'm from Puerto Rico. Yeah, no, um, yeah. So the only guy that he that he shoots um is the guy who say, says that he's from Hong Kong, which I think is just a like, fucking terrible idea when the question is literally what kind of American are you? Um, yeah, why you'd answer Hong Kong? That's just so dumb. Yeah. Um, and so then, oh, I should probably mention the characters that walk up. So we mentioned that you got Lee. Joel, Tony, and Sammy. Well, Sammy doesn't like walk up to uh, Jesse Plemons because he is old. Because he's old, and that's his only character. So, like, you're gonna stay behind because you're old. Yep. They literally say that like verbatim. Yeah, it it is. It, you know, absolutely worth uh, highlighting this. So, um, basically, uh, um, there is a point where um, our our characters are just kind of well. Yeah, our our characters are basically fucked, right? Um, yeah. They 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 kill uh, 
Tony, who answers from Hong Kong. And by the way, he is breaking down, of course, because his friend Bo Hai has just been fucking murdered in front of him. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a, it's a really solid performance. Um, now, uh, how do our characters get out of this situation? Well, it is because the old guy who stayed behind got into the, the car, uh, the SUV with press written on the side, um, and uh, runs over uh, Jesse Plemons and the other soldier guy that he was with. Um, which also so, so it runs them over, and then this also bumps um, Jesse into the mass grave. Mm-hmm. She is not hurt. She doesn't get like hit by the car or anything. But yeah, kid, I, I I had trouble figuring out what exactly happened there. Yeah, she um, just she just gets knocked really fast. She just gets knocked into the uh, into the mass grave through some means, and it, I I can only assume that it makes sense. I'll assume that the way that this happened made sense in good faith because mm-hmm. I don't have the movie in front of me. Um, Jesse now, Clemens is dead, but like one of the, the, the other soldier that was with him, do, like does survive this. We see ac- later. So ac- actually, no, the other soldier that was with him outside doesn't, but there is a third guy inside the truck because oh. they're, they're dumping. Yeah. So, 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 then there's, so there's three. So, so the two bad guys actually do die in this, but like Jesse just gets knocked into the grave. That's what happens. Yeah. Jesse gets knocked into the mass grave. Uh, and now we have a 23 year old, uh, who is now sitting on top of a pile of, uh, of, of dead bodies. And she has to literally crawl over them to get out of the mass grave. Yeah. Pretty traumatic experience. Um, yeah. Were, no, you know what that reminds me of is, um, do you, do you ever like, see like, oh, I'll try to remember the name. Of the, like there was a video game that came out in like 2008, 2009 ish set during like, and, and the whole setting is like America has been occupied by like, I think like North Korea or something. Yeah. Um, somehow, somehow. And there's literally like, there's a really like meme scene where you escape from North Koreans by like crawling through and like hiding underneath a bunch of dead bodies in a mass grave. And it's oh, just giving that fun. kind of same incredibly cringe vibe. Of, like, yeah. Oh, okay. This is a thing that's <laughs> happening, I guess. And by the way, I just got to highlight like, I'm, it, it has to take her at least some time to do this, but I guess that the guy that's uh, driving the dump truck um, doesn't he, care to get out of the car and fucking kill them. Yeah. They're all waiting for her to get out of the grave. He takes his sweet motherfucking time to get out, grab a rifle, and start shooting at them. He, he basically he doesn't start doing that until they've They're already well enough the away car. that he can't really hit them. Yeah. Yeah. Um. He. Well, that's he not shoots, true. Well, he shoots because yeah. he does shoot Sammy. Yeah. So he. Sh- well, here's the thing. He he shoots the car, and I guess that one of his bullets is like. He, here's the thing. His bullet very fortunately hit Sammy without hitting anyone in the back seat. I guess. I, yeah, I don't exactly know. I guess it went through the the driver's side door and like went through his seat. The problem is that I I I I I distinctly recall that the car is like kind of off in the distance by the time that he starts shooting. At least that's how I remember it, and yeah. I could be wrong. Um, I don't really know how it happened, but either way, he gets shot and like his left, uh, like abdomen side. Yeah, Sammy doesn't even like like and here's the thing is like Sammy drives for a good while. Um and and, and I mean it makes sense like you know he's got adrenaline going. Adrenaline um, and he wants to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He wants to get the fuck out of there. He wants to get his friends out of there. So it, it's fine. And then he realizes uh I can't drive anymore. I'm 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 bleeding and so they get in the back seat and there's this moment where well so remember the needle drops uh Sheev we were talking uh-huh. about like how, how silly they are and um, yeah, there's a point where they're they're driving through as like like this burning forest. Um, yeah. While Sammy is just bleeding out in the back seat. Um, really good visuals. I liked everything to do with that. Yeah. Um, the um, music just didn't fit the tone of the scene, though. No, not at all. Um, and then they they by the time they finally get to uh, what is a Western Forces military base. Uh, Sammy has succumbed to his injuries. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and like the, again, Joel seems to be the one who's most deeply affected. Yes. Um, and he's like screaming and crying and freaking out. But also, again, like this was a very traumatic experience for Jesse, and it should yeah. have been enough of a lesson to be like, okay, cool. So let's never do anything stupid again. Right. Um. So yeah, they're they're at this Western Forces base, and there's like this British uh, lady reporter with her cameraman that they talk with. I don't remember what the 
the exact contents of their discussion was. They were um, saying that the Western forces had already moved in on the capital. Oh yeah, so they um they 100% uh miss their deadline to get yeah. to DC. They can no longer interview the president, which was totally something that was a viable option anyway. Um and but like the reason why they came and achieved that goal in the first place is because they basically brought Jesse along. Yep. Fucking Christ. Right. So bringing um, Jesse along turned out to not be a good idea. Who would have guessed? It's yeah. So so this movie is basically one of those uh, shaggy dog stories, basically. Um. So, uh, elaborate oh, on that, please. Okay. TV tropes, shaggy dog story. I, I, I just want to make sure that I I've got the uh the the thing up. So, um, a shaggy dog story is a plot with a high level of build up and complicating action, only to be resolved with an anticlimax or ironic reversal. Usually, one that makes the entire story meaningless. Yeah. Um, the the term comes from a type of joke uh, that works the same way: a basic premise, a long amount of buildup, and a del- deliberately underwhelming punchline. Um, a classic example of this is a man living in the U.S. who finds a shaggy dog similar to one in a lost dog poster from a rich family in England, and flies over there to re- trying to return it to them for the reward money. When he finally makes it there, he's told by whoever answers the door that, that the dog wasn't that shaggy before the door is slammed in his face. Hence the name "Shaggy Dog Story." Um, that's basically what happened in the movie. Um, the whole thing was to... Isn't that the Krusty Krab Pizza episode of Spongebob? Kind of. Yeah. Um, the, the, the the whole purpose was to get this interview with the president, and they just simply can't do that because they brought Jesse along. I'm like, fucking great. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> like, How dare like, you? <laughs> like she said, the moment where Tony and Bohai come into the movie is like, this is where things just start it flying just off the rails. Yeah, just derail. Yeah. The entire movie just becomes shit. Y- yeah, like, because again, we were talking about like a lot of really solid character work stuff in like the first half of the movie, in like the first couple acts. Then the, the third act comes in, and oh my God. So um, we can we we can literally sp- speed run this. So now we're in DC. The Western forces have now. Uh, started attacking dc and dc is now a full-blown war zone and i mean just like the um the shootout on the college campus earlier um it's a our main characters are following behind like these soldiers as they're advancing toward the uh white house yeah um it's it's a really well directed um uh shootout sequence um or war zone sequence um they were kind of doing a thing though with Lee in this that I thought was weird because I I didn't think it was set up, but maybe I just didn't catch all of the setup. Like she she seemed to be like really overwhelmed by everything that was happening. Yeah, she was having like a PTSD episode, and which like I thought came out of complete nowhere because like you know the whole thing was that she's she's this like experienced season photographer mm-hmm. who's not phased by much, and like she like when Sammy died. Like she's the one who took it, I think, with the, in the most stride, you know, mm-hmm. out of Meanwhile, all of them, because that's just her character. And now Joel is the one who is like trying to help her get through this PTSD episode, and and now uh, Jesse, the character who freaked out the most, like regarding the the most tame encounter that they've had in this movie, um, as well as seeing a man die, and and um, the. Um, the mass grave and all of those experiences is now cool as a cucumber in the sequence. Mm. And I got to be honest with you. I think I, I, I kind of think that this is unearned. Like I, 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 I don't think that there's really like a gradual progression for her to be like this. It kind of comes out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. We haven't like built up her becoming more and more likely. No, you know, which is what they I think they were kind of going for initially as like, the again, the reason why Lee doesn't want her tagging along and 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 going down this path is because she sees a lot of herself in her when mm-hmm. she was that age, just starting out. And she doesn't want her to become this hardened sort of uh, yeah. sort of a, uh, you know, like, you know, hard ass who who who, who uh, can just look in the look at people being tortured or mm-hmm. murdered or set on fire and just mm-hmm. like not be phased at all. She doesn't want that for her. No, she's she's not. It's nothing like that. Whereas, uh, in contrast, um, I think like The Last of Us with Ellie in 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 the first game does a really fucking good job of this. Where in, in, 
she's not even well so here's the thing is it's not a direct equivalence because ellie is uh way more hardened um at 14 when we first see her in in that game but like you know believably becomes more hardened as the story progresses um to the point where she is able to fend for herself and joel um like during winter basically right now that stuff can't still affect her um but i feel like it was just done way better there whereas here we've got someone who's completely green completely inexperienced um sure wants to be a, a wartime journalist um but has only shown themselves to be like pretty much unsuited for this exact field and now she is like a professional um i can't really do anything well because she just typed brb in in, in the chat um in, in in our little private chat um he's probably taking a fat shit it's it, it yeah it's it's kind of hard uh to like bounce this off of two guys who've never watched the movie before but like for me at least and and, and i mean she kind of uh corroborated it with what he had to say it just kind of seems unearned um so the western yeah. forces yeah yes yeah. oh i mean do, do you have anything to comment to, to, to add to that Sheev? Uh, no, we covered that part because yeah. you know, I want to I want to kind of get through the rest of this because we're yeah. basically almost done. We are almost done. So yeah, they advance to the White House. Um, uh, there's a lot of of combat there. Um, it seems like the the Secret Service tried to bring the president into the limo and escort him out of there um, with a couple of uh, armored SUVs. Um, the Western forces very quickly intercept the limo and uh, crash into it and stop it. Um, you know, kill everyone inside. The president was not in there. Now, uh -huh. I can, it was a it was a decoy. It was I, a it was a ploy to to distract them. Yeah, I can only assume that the like the goal, of course, was to actually get the limo as far the fuck away from the White, from the White House as possible to then draw the Western forces away from the White House and then actually escort the president out for real. Yeah, like that has to be what it was because as it stands, like I don't know what this really would have accomplished for him other than buying yeah. them three minutes. But the problem here, she is that they knew that the Western forces were advancing on DC. So why the fuck were they still in DC at this point? Yeah, why was the president not in fucking Alaska, which is where he had requested to be uh, taken to? Is there uh, is there not a bunker in the White House? Like there is, yeah. You would think like 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 a well, fall use shelter, it right yeah he didn't um, fucking use it he hid in the Oval Office the fucking Oval desk. Office oh yeah, yeah the, the place with the big window uh huh yeah yeah nice that, that's um, smart he hid underneath the desk so he was facing the big window ah gotcha that's that's yeah a fucking idea smart. yeah well it's, it's, before uh, well brilliant. there's something that happens before this Sheev so well yeah I'm just I'm just letting us I'm just letting everyone know that the president is fucking stupid yeah um. I mean, what else is new? Well, <laughs> so yeah, there. Uh, the Western forces are. Well, so here's the thing: is is Lee understands? Oh, the president's actually not in the, in the limo, and so like starts walking towards the White House uh, with Joel and Jesse, and some Western forces soldiers start realizing that they're onto something. So they they follow them and then like overshoot them and start uh, shooting their way through the White House and uh, blitzing through the Secret Service. Um, the Western forces are like unbelievably fucking good soldiers, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. like, I don't they, think they take a single casualty. It, they, it's quite literally a no damage run against the secret service. Mm -hmm. Um, so then on top of this, uh, please don't be so harsh with Wagner Mora. Um, we liked, so first off his character is our favorite character in this movie and we don't have a problem with anyone's acting. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's also my favorite um, character in Puss in Boots. So there's that. Exactly. Um, okay, so there's a shootout happening in the uh, in the White House, and well, she we we set this up earlier when mentioning like you would think that this whole experience with uh, the mass grave thing would teach Jesse to not do anything stupid and reckless in this. You mean um, like standing out in the middle of a hallway to get a picture of yeah. the shootout? Yeah. So they're after our, being our, repeatedly warned not to do that. Our characters are are literally photographing uh, these shootouts as they're happening, which like in in the context of how they're doing it, it's fine. They're in cover and they're just they're simply in cover, taking photos. Constantly, like behind the soldiers, they're moving when the soldiers move. Yep, um, and keeping like you know 
they're, they're right right next to them so they know that it's safe to they are doing they are doing this as safely as they can while while getting quality pictures of these shootouts so mm -hmm. it's overall fine it's good stuff and then just decides <laughs> steps so out into the middle of the fucking hallway when like like hostels on the um, at the end of the hallway aren't ha like haven't been neutralized they're still there they're still yeah. shooting at us yeah she, like the area has not been cleared. They are still in the middle of an active shootout. And Jesse steps out of any fucking cover to try to get a good look, like a good a good shot of the Secret Service agents that are still alive and still shooting in her general direction. So what do you think is going to happen next? Any well, guesses? you know what? Let's, let's ask this to, to the C and Jolly. Guys, what do you think happens next? Uh, well, I know what happens next because I've read Wikipedia. Oh. So. <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. This well, all what, sounds like what, a clusterfuck. What should happen, see? What should happen when Jesse does this? Man, I don't fucking know. To be completely honest, I'm fucking out of the loop with this. Okay, sorry. This makes no Bro's sense to me. Out. <laughs> um, Bro is checked out. It's uh, so hard to like understand any of this. This is insane. Jesse yeah. should get her head blown off right here. Um, okay, because this is like hearing somebody reciting the Bible. I'm like, wait, hold on. What the fuck? In Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. In Japanese, fucking read backwards, <laughs> translated hundreds of times through what, what happened through AI. Yeah. Like, here's, like, it's here's, just, incomprehensible but but let's suppose this right let's say there's someone who does like is like jesse how about you don't do this uh and tries to save her life um you would think that if you were to do this uh you'd be so, like tackling okay, yeah, from the like, side? yeah okay so here's what happens lee jumps out it like basically right in front of her pushes jesse down so that she falls on her back instead of just tackling her so that they both go down and are then you know, laying on the floor and have a much lower chance of being shot. But instead, she just remains standing and then gets shot multiple times in the back. And and then, well, it, it, hold on. There's a really funny detail to this. So Jesse decides while she is on her back, uh, right in front of, of Lee, and Lee is just standing there, she decides she is going to bring her camera up to her eye and start taking pictures of Lee as she gets shot. Well, you see, they set this up earlier. Remember, I think it was yes. in the bleacher scene. Because uh, no, again, it was it was, again, it was it was the helicopter scene. The helicopter scene. That's right. Because again, they're yeah. trying to set up this thing where like she is becoming like Lee. And earlier, and you know, Lee's obviously this like this sort of hard ass who has become impartial to all of this and is like close herself off from feeling anything about about the horrific things she's she's witnessing and that's what that's theoretically the arc that jesse has just gone on um even though it's not um so earlier in the movie uh when lee was warning her about like all the horrific things that they're gonna see and that you know it's like no place for her and you, like you're probably gonna get shot and killed she said and like if i do would you would you photograph that happening would you know like essentially mm -hmm. asking like would you stand by and do nothing but you know, continue to, to look on as an objective viewer. Um, and then she says, yes. So then now we're like, this is supposed to be the payoff. We're like, because Jesse has become like Lee, she's now doing exactly that. Except um, she is being extremely reckless. Um, and then, extremely reckless. And then Lee is literally tr like half-assing her attempt to pull her out of danger. Mm -hmm. In fact, like pretty much. Well, and again, that seems to be what the art, like theoretically, what the arc is supposed to have been for Lee, that she becomes more like Jesse and Jesse becomes more like Lee. Mm -hmm. So like Lee, who at the beginning of the movie said, if you're getting shot at, like, I'm just going to watch from the sidelines, puts herself in danger to, you know, get her out of harm's way. And that's supposed to have been the, the culmination of her arc. Right. It but, just wasn't well, done very well. Because like Lee, why are you just standing there and so like why can't you just get shot while trying to like drag uh Jesse to safety? Just tackle her. You're tackle then you're both on the get, floor. Tackle her, like literally tackle her and get shot as you're tackling her, like take bullets for her, right? What happens instead is she pushes her to the floor, so she's not even she's barely out of danger now, and then she just stands there. Um, all right, so and then again, like I thought this was left ambiguous, but apparently Wikipedia has confirmed that was her death. That's like Lee's done. Yeah, and nobody reacts. Joel doesn't give a fuck. 
Yeah, um, there's no... Well, so, you see, there's no way for the movie to have a scene that shows, actually, Leah's fine. Uh, and you'll understand why soon. So, the Western forces finally make it to the White House, and yeah, the president was just cowering under his desk. They had... <laughs> the Oval Office. They had no plan whatsoever. He was just going to stay behind in the in the Oval Office. No fallout shelter, no evacuation prior to he did have he did have one of his cronies like request on his behalf that he be taken alive and then take it to, yeah. to uh to neutral territory which she listed alaska or greenland as neutral territory but mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure on that map alaska was part of the loyalist territory so exactly. i don't fucking know yeah that's weird um so yeah and, and, and they shoot the press secretary when they're like fuck this yeah. um but yeah, so um, President Ron Swanson it just decided <laughs> to uh, hide under his desk in the Oval Office and pray that the Secret Service would uh, stomp the Western forces. But it turns out that like um, um, Texan civilians are way better than or are, are, are like way better shooters than the Secret Service. So there's that. I mean, to be fair, isn't it like a quarter of the Marines are from Texas? Yeah, like if, if anyone, um, if guess, anyone yeah. who's not like, like technically military trained is going to be good with guns, you, 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 I'd bet on Texans for it, sure. Still, like it's Secret Service. It, I don't know. It, it, it's the absolute lack of casualties from the Western forces. That's just like yeah. it's just it's so. They silly. go in with a like relatively small group. Yeah, um, it's of, like, of, like no more than nine, and not a single one of them dies. Legitimately, like SEAL Team Texas, right here. It's <laughs> hilarious. Um. So then, uh, uh, now here's the thing. Now, now Joel is is face to face with the president, and remember, this whole thing started with him wanting an interview with the president, and well, Lee has just died, um, mm-hmm. which he doesn't care about, but that's fine. Yeah. So the the Western forces are about to gun him down, the president, and then Joel goes, "Wait," which I guess is enough to get them to not do it. Mm-hmm. Yep. He, he has some kind of sway over whether or not they carry out their duty. Yeah. Um, so that's fine. He then gets close to the president and asks for a quote. And then he's yeah. just like, please don't let them kill me. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah. okay. Good enough. And then, All right. <laughs> and then uh, Jesse takes uh, photos of uh, the president's summary execution from the Western forces. Mm-hmm. And the movie fucking ends right there. There is no denouement. There is no, uh, like, the pacing of this movie is just fucked, Sheev. It, it's bonkers. Um, it is truly bizarre. And, and and let me let me talk about, like, why I think this is, like, such a particularly big problem, right? Is because the entire point, like, it seems like the entire point of um, not explaining the, uh, the origin or the purpose of the conflict very clearly is because they wanted to focus on the characters, right? Well, the problem right, here, the problem here is like, okay, so you've you've tied Lee and Jesse's character arcs and Joel's, by the way, in the most bonkers way possible, um, through a like a, a, a this war this, this war sequence that like is overall fine. It, it starts off fine and then just goes off the rails once they're in the White House itself, um, and then you shoot the president. And you're like, all right. So, what happens next for Joel? What, like, how is he going to, uh, is he going to like actually process his friend Lee's death? No. Nope. What? How, how about how about Jesse? Um, Maybe is he going to ask if any of this was worth it in the end? Because that's all he was able to get out of the president right at his, his final moments. Yeah. He lost someone that he cares deeply about that he's been like working with for some time. Two people actually. Mm-hmm. How about Lee? How about like? I mean. Is there going to be anything like any scene of her processing that like she pretty much got got Lee killed? Like 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 you, you meant Jesse because you you said Jessie. Lee and that, that I'm sorry. How about how shit out of me? How about Jesse? Is 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 she going to like? Well, you see, Jesse has gone to the dark side now. Yeah, she, she's she is uh, truly impartial and objective to the suffering of others. Yeah, um, there is no wrap up. There is no resolution to this. They shoot the president and then the end credits, which uh, is yet another needle drop that feels unbelievably inappropriate compared to the tone of uh, the the whole rest of the movie. 
is just um the soldiers standing over like like the this the smiling soldier, the, the smiling Western for, forces soldier is standing over the president's corpse, and it's just a, a developing photo. It just like it 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 fades into uh like clarity, basically. Could have done unironically the funniest end credit scene in all of history, where like they, they just end it there, the credits roll, and then like the scene picks back right up again, and they were like, "Ha ha, now what?" And then it ends again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that yeah, it's just like so. There's. We have absolutely like no ideas to like what happens next for America now that the president is dead. What, like, it, <sighs> who takes control of the federal government essentially? So basically, this is a movie where the world building is half-assed so that they can focus on just the characters, but then the characters get half-assed towards the end. So, it, so it's just like it's one of those things where I just I I I I, so I wait, you said like, you said the president got shot, right? The president yeah. got shot. What He's if dead. we got a post-credit scene where he actually wakes up in a back to tank? <laughs> <laughs> got like a cyborg arm or whatever, and it's just good to go. Somehow well, the they, president they returned. Out, what's that thing from like Kingsman 2 where they can just put like around your head and like, you can recover from a headshot? Yeah. <laughs> shot you. Well, he doesn't I even get so shot in the head. They just they just shoot him in the torso. Which is yeah, like well, that's that's a little anticlimactic for a for a, for an execution, I think. But you think that's going to kill Ron Swanson? No, exactly. no, there's no killing Ron Swanson. <laughs> and like, and by the way, like this is the only scene that uh, Ron that that Ron Swanson has in this movie besides the very first one. Yeah, I mean, you see him pop up on the TV every now and then, just basically giving some variation of a "We're going to defeat yeah. the secessionist movement" speech. He's got like. It. Yeah, he's got like three minutes of screen time, and that's our antagonist. Okay, so this this Domino guy in the chat said, "Now what?" Like in Finding Nemo. And, yeah. Uh, now I'm just imagining that Jolly's exact description happening, and then it just cuts to Beyond the Sea. <laughs> which I have no <laughs> bias at all. I love that song. Yeah, Domino yeah, yeah, yeah. cuts to. Um, have you seen like the uh, the Swedish ending of Finding Nemo? Yeah. No. So, so in, in in Swedish, the final word uh, of Funny Nemo is just the word slut written on the screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? I've, I've, been, I've been ignoring the chat, but like, it's so funny here, uh, seeing Domino saying, congrats, maybe you've outstupided real presidents. And then we got <laughs> followed by Grizzly Ghost saying, that's the laziest ending I could have imagined, which is like, yeah. Like, yeah. Literally, literally as soon as it ended, because like, she even, I'm pretty sure that like, yeah, she even, we went to... Uh, like a showing that's that was that started at the exact same time. Literally, as soon as it ended, she texts that was well, that was a movie I've seen. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 one of the movies I've seen. And in 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 Domino, I, going, <laughs> when I was sitting in the theater, like whenever it cuts a credit, someone in the in a few rows ahead of me was like, "That was it? It's and, over." Which yeah, Domino says that. What it ends there? That's it. <laughs> the next thing, so it's a shit movie. Okay, it's like yeah, it's. It's bad. Um, I, so, and this is the thing is like, I think Sheev said that he was going to give it like a five out of 10, but it's like a very non committal five out of 10. Um, and like I said, I'm not comfortable giving it even a five. I'd say it's like, it's it's no more than a four and it could be a three. Um, but like, uh, I don't know. There were, Again, there was a lot of good stuff. But then again, the stuff that was good didn't ultimately stick the landing. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go down to like a four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, now you're, you're changing it up, huh, Sheev? You fucking grifter. It's, it's a, yeah. Oh, he's just gone. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh you <laughs> shit <him> out. <laughs> you fucking shit ass. Um, and? Uh, well, okay, so, so Domino. I don't know. Domino says 5 out of 10 sounds too generous. Sounds like a 2 or 2.5. So here's the it's problem. It's not that bad. Well, so, so no, here's the problem. 5 is like almost sequels level of bad, and that's, yeah. that's really bad. Yeah, yeah. so... Well, okay, so so uh, in Cynic saying, I assume it was it was mad by the start of the stream. But you convinced me it was just bad. So again, we highlighted that there's several actually strong moments in the movie, like character wise and everything. And there's like there's redeeming qualities to this movie. The problem is the base premise of it is nonsensical for starters, and then there's mm -hmm. several things that are just plain old half assed. Um, we 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 talked about this ages ago, um, but we, like we'll have to like rewatch the movie. But like like. Um, we, uh, I mean, it seems like we would give Spider Man one a very similar rating, it, assuming that what we believe to be the case is true. Is like it could be like a four where it's like there's several things that are redeemable about this, but um, there's there's several problems like 
the premises that we're working off of here, basically. So is it better or worse than Temple of Doom? I'd say better. Worse. I'd say better. I'd say it is it is uh it is worse than Temple of Doom. This is the worst movie ever. Zero out of ten, it can go fuck itself because it didn't have the funny beyond the sea transition at the end. <laughs> That's fair. You um, should have had my theme song, man. Diagon no, saying, it's not your theme song. <laughs> Andrew. It, it's beyond you. Diagon is, said, is it I, better or worse than Resident Evil One? Sorry, what did what did Dagon say? Um, I was not even aware of this movie's existence, but can someone can somebody in the comments explain? The, the <laughs> That's what the fucking stream was, Jack. We have we have a stream for that, Dagon. Check it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. How about when the stream ends, you just watch this three three hour stream where we're just like breaking it down. Um, it was really good. Yeah, the movie. So yeah, yeah, it was excellent. <laughs> I should stay for. Should all go it. see it, Dagon. It's actually it's a special preview of it. It's Spend actually kind of hard money on dollars. It's actually kind of nice. Like we have for free actually provided a much more entertaining experience than the movie itself. Uh, yeah. Again, like when it comes to streaming, there's like some moments that are like worth checking out, but like, yeah. Um, do did not recommend. The, um, did you see the thing about Alex Garland being like, "This is going to be my last ever movie. Like I can't do this anymore because everything's so toxic." And I was like, "Don't threaten me with a good time, man." <laughs> Wait, did he say that because all the all of his movies get t t typically negative reception? Is that is that what? It... All of his movies actually I, get really I positive think, reception. Yeah, um, I, I don't think it's that. I think he's just like, oh, I'm sick of I'm sick of filmmaking and I'm sick of the whole filmmaking world, which is just like incredibly petulant. <laughs> but well, sure. Yeah. Well, he, he wants... How many people would kill to be in your position? Yeah. Well, I will say this: he wrote uh, 28 Days Later in Dread. Um, so, he did, which is. Which and, and, and Ex Machina, which is like I don't understand how this, mm -hmm. how how these things exist. Well, he so here's the thing: he wrote Ex Machina and and Annihilation and Men. Um, so one of the three. Also, but he also was an uncredited writer on Twenty Eight Weeks Later, and Twenty Eight Weeks Later was not good. So it's really bad. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen Maybe Sunshine. I'm credited for a reason. Uh, Sunshine is uh, Sunshine is one of those movies where like the first third is really strong, and then the rest of it is pretty bad. Okay, I I remember twenty eight days later in dread being really good. So and then there's X yeah. X back in us. So there is that. Um, but yeah, everything else uh, from his filmography that I've seen is not very good. It, it, are you aware of devs? Uh, um, I am. I am aware of devs. Yes. Is it bad? Uh, how do how do I put this politely? Um, <laughs> oh lord. It is. It is. And the thing is, like, I'm in a unique position, right, as someone who who does artificial intelligence programming as, as as my job. Like, it is perhaps the most offensive depiction of artificial intelligence programming and the philosophy around it that I've ever seen. Ooh. And the fact that some people com compared it to Westworld season one is a heresy I will not abide. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah, yeah, Civil War, another another masterpiece from uh, from Alex Garland. Um, Ryan Johnson gave it his uh, his thumbs up. So I yeah, mean, I would basically rule of thumb. Ryan Johnson gives it a thumbs up. It's gonna fucking suck. I that's not yeah. true. He recommends a lot of uh, Gamero Del Toro films. So that's well, now true. I hate Del Toro because of him. Um, <laughs> get out. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, All right, we're gonna wait. go ahead, go ahead and wrap this up though. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna say good night, lads. I'm kidding. I, I, I don't. Have, have because it's good night, Jollert. Awesome. Have have a good, good night. night. Uh, and you know what? I will update the description after the stream is over to link his channel. I didn't because he wasn't supposed to be part of the stream, but he <laughs> fucking pushed his way in the little parasite. Um, Why would so you, you know, ever properly compensate people who help you with a stream? You fucking asshole. So you can check out <laughs> his channel as well as Seas and Southpaw down. Yeah. Don't watch my yeah. channel. I'm terrible. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Anyway, see y'all. Love you. Uh, I hate women and minorities. So, same. <laughs> <laughs>